I can't believe that, whoa, whoa. Two things are a problem. That picture, <laughs> isn't that the ugliest picture you've ever seen in your life? And my volume levels are hot. Am I like blowing your ears out right now? That's what my levels are saying. How's this? Is this better? Yeah, a little bit better. Why is it so, I don't understand life. Erica Lewis. That's a name I haven't seen in a long, long time. Hello, stranger. Welcome here. Jack Russell, 10,000 pine points. I mean, you are the best. Most people don't know this, but when Jack Russell was in college, he won a hairy leg contest. I mean, his legs are so hairy, but yet so sleek and so fine. Well, maybe it's because he's a Jack Russell Terrier. That's why his, he won the hairy leg contest. Rich Younger 9. Can I get an amen? Yes. Amen and amen and amen. 5,000 pine points to you. You're younger than me and you're probably richer than me. So congratulations. Morphology, retrocausality. <clears throat> no, morph morphological, retrocausality. Way too many syllables for this farm boy from Manitoba. But 1,000 pine points to you and Aaron Wanker. Like, I, I don't plan these things, people. We got a wanker in fourth place. Not only are you a wanker, you're a loser. You know you're going to go blind, right? Floyd, you just made it in time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's Theus Thursday. You can call in. Oh, I didn't set. Myron, why didn't you set that up ahead of time? Incompetent. He's paid $5 an hour, and he's overpaid. So the way you call in... And I guess I'll accept atheists calling in, but you have to do it before the theists because I will choose theists before atheists any day because you atheists are boring. You and your, I don't believe in anything but uh, molecules in motion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't, you atheists out there, you, you got to understand people like Bill Craig, right? I mean, they just want to be happy. They just want love. Just like you, there's one chance in a million Christianity's right. He's going to cling to it, man. It's because it gives him hope, meaning, and purpose. I don't know. Maybe atheism is just for freaks of nature who don't desire this metaphysical love from on high. You atheists are freaks. Don't you, don't you need that? Don't you desire that? Well, yeah, anyhow, if you watch this, I just, I guess I could play it, but uh, I'll start it here. And so my attitude toward this is just the opposite of Kyle's. Far from raising the bar or the epistemic standard that Christianity must need to be believed, I, I lower it. Yeah, he lowers his epistemic bar. That's what you have to do in order to believe in Christianity and Islam. Yes, you Muslims, I'm talking to you too. You lowered your bar, your epistemic bar, just like William Lane Craig to believe a, a guy named Muhammad heard from an angel named Gabriel who heard from a god named Allah to, who spoke the very words to this illiterate man who then recited them to various people over hundreds of uh, decades and you think this has something to do with the creator of the universe. Come on. Doosh, doosh. This is why the flying man is very effective, by the way. Because it shows how Christians lower the bar to believe what they believe.
because they wouldn't believe any other things based on the same evidence. Anyhow, the room's open for theists. I'll wait. I'll take questions in the live stream chat too while I wait. I don't care. We're just waiting for Jesus to return, right? Tag me though. Do you know how to do that? You have to go like uh, shift number two on your keyboard. <clears throat> but most of you use smartphones because you're too good for keyboards. Jim Bob, at least admit that you, you, you feel the need to defend <clears throat> theism because you got married to a Christian. Come on. I'm losing my voice. I haven't used my voice very much today. So, one, two, three, testing. <coughs> Good night, everyone. Everybody's going to leave now. I don't care. Doug looks handsome today. Are you a plant, Aaron Deemers? Erica, why can't you be more like Aaron? At least show up once in a while to Poker Nights. We need a token female. Maybe Jim Bob can come and be our token female. Jim Bob, you want to play poker? Do you play poker? We take Christians. We have at least one. But he's probably a flag-waving phony. If the Gospels were eyewitness testimony with absolutely zero legendary development, how much would your confidence in the resurrection go up? Graze 174, great question. Really, you're saying, if the eyewitness testimony is true, would you believe it? Yes. If Christianity is true, would I believe it's true? Yes. And then the next question is, would you follow it? Is it worth following? What exactly is this Christianity? Have you spoken to Derek since the incident? Yes, Jephthah's daughter. He actually came on my show uh, a few weeks after the incident. Big blind flops of flush do some fishing or value or all in. That's poker talk. Like, this is like speaking Christianese to atheists. They don't understand Uber. Pine Creek, what is the weight loss? I have uh, 173 from 203. Lost 30 pounds in the span of 100 days. Eating nothing, well, 90% meat, a few carbs, but mostly healthy carbs, like asparagus. Is Peter W. banned? Yes. I do not like Peter W. When I think of Peter W., I think about smelling soured milk. No offense, but I needed a break from you guys. Hey, I don't blame you. I would want a break from us guys, too. But we've changed, Erica. We've changed. We've grown so much. Room's open for theists. I'll even take atheists, but if I see a theist knocking, I'll just, without a warning, I'll just click the remove button from the atheist. Unless you're really saying stuff that interests me. If I were to win your Pine Point Vegas trip, would you share a bed with me? I don't know, Matthew Simpson. Are you a good kisser? Stephen Mag Magan? Oh, you're a great person. That's just gross, enslaved by truth. Am I taller than Tom Cruise? Everybody is taller than Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is the same height as Jesus. Did you know that? In fact, maybe Tom Cruise is a little taller than Jesus. We need a before and after pick. Yeah, it'll, I'll, I will do a before and after pick so you can see my new and approved dad bod. I don't understand poker, but I'm rich. Jack Russell, email me now. This is like those uh, infomercials. You're sitting on the couch or in your chair. Get up right now. Find my email. It's in the about tab of my YouTube page. And email me. I mean, we need, we need pe more people like you who know nothing about poker but are rich.
<sighs> hey, Doug. Hi, what joke do you have for me today? <laughs> it's not a joke, Doug. I'm out here trying to promote the cult of the flying man. Guts it given made a video. I saw it. it. You did see it? I saw I'm it. So really glad you saw it. And also You did well, uh, by the way. You did a very good thank job. You. Thank you. And uh, in all seriousness, Derek from Myth Vision uh came by and has been trying to help me out. I'm gonna do more with Erica. And that all started because Danny uh told me some uh, creationist wanted to talk to me. So I actually just came on to say thank you, Doug. Most people that have found me found me through your channel and uh, Nate and Danny. And so you've helped me out a tremendous deal. I just wanted to say thanks. Well, you're welcome. I, I don't take compliments well, but you're you're welcome. Uh, I was gonna say, um, with when you're talking to LPP, logical possible, sure. yeah. You gotta remember, you just imagine him 50% drunk whenever you talk to him, because he's, right. he's I actually don't think he's all there, seriously. Right, and, and and you get the same vibe probably from like uh, Bible research tools that other guy right that he was that was kind of yelling at me the one that said yeah that Satan is a celebrated scientist yeah there's uh, just like Bill Craig that video I just made uh, they really need this uh, right like LPP he almost died he had brain surgery I think or something like that oh I didn't know that I yeah didn't know that. yeah and so for them there's so much at stake. And so they, they're, they're latching on for dear life to anything that can give them confidence that it's true. I do have a serious question for you, which is, um, uh, now that I think about it, which is, uh, you talk about the lowering of the standard, right? That's the thing with this Bill Craig video and so much of what we see going on in this community. Uh, how do you gain the audacity to speak to that? Because I feel like you talk a lot about people being sort of uh, neediness, right? Neediness versus IQ. And I think they're kind of intertwined, whereas it seems like what people need is to feel like they're high IQ, right? They need to feel smart. And you kind of have a, a way of jabbing at that a little yeah. bit better than I still people. separate so them. Somebody starting out. I still separate the two because uh, you'll find, I'm sure in graduate school you've seen this, the really high IQ people don't need, don't need to be viewed as high IQ people. Happy to say I don't know all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I even my students that's the three most important words in science. Yeah, and um, and usually people with doctorate degrees, they don't typically introduce themselves as having a doctorate degrees. Like they just, sure, sure. I mean, and so when I see someone who yeah needs to be viewed as high IQ, then I kind of uh, you're probably low IQ. <laughs> um, but what about? Do you think it's a good idea to just go straight at the, do you really think explicitly saying don't lower your standards for Jesus? Because I saw you do that with the Trent Horn debate, and I actually tell people I think it was really effective. Like you talked kind of past him and talked to his audience and said, Christian brothers and sisters, like I beg of you, don't lower your standards for Jesus. Have you gotten any feedback from Christians on that? Uh, well, of course, there's just going to be a certain percentage who will say, well, uh, we're not lowering our standards. The evidence is just so overwhelming for God and for Christianity. Um, I, I have gotten some feedback from that debate, and, but it's been sometimes via other live streams that I've watched. And there's always going to be a certain percentage of high neediness, low IQ people, I think, who will just say, oh, you got crushed. Sure, um, sure. But like even Trent Horn, I think he was surprised by that debate because he had this view of me, of me sucking back milkshakes with Randall Rouser. Remember that video? Yes, yeah. right, right. When, <laughs> before that debate, when Trenhorn thought of Pine Creek, he thought of that video. And then afterwards, I saw on a live stream, he said, Doug did much better than I was expecting. I mean, and, and I think very few theists will admit this, but the fact that I couldn't care less about, well, do you have evidence of this? Do you have evidence of that? Can you produce documentation of this? I just say, no, 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 no. Then I'm just honest. And I, right. don't, I don't care if that honesty makes me look bad or like I'm not prepared. No, I'm just, I'm just here telling you what I think. And, and, and so I actually think a lot of theists appreciated that and are then become more open to hearing what I have to say. 
between you and I, I really think it's a powerful approach. I have some conversations with Rebecca and people coming up, and I think really talking to them about the value of honesty and uh, what does an honest approach really look like might be a powerful sort of emotional connection to try to form. Because I think for a lot of us that were in the faith, for whatever reason, that's what let us out, right? We just had to eventually be honest with ourselves, and we placed that honesty with self and others above being right. And maybe that's not everybody, but I think for a lot of us, that is at least a true story in our lives that we can uh, sort of relate with. Thanks so much for your time, Doug. I know it's uh, Theus Thursday, so I'll let you-, you Your, your background it, but... always has a purple hue to it. Did you have purple lights? Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of a theme. I have an alternate ego called Purple Haze. So I like to go with the purple. Is it true that purple, purple is the least found color in nature? I, it seems to be, I see, see, I always tell people just cause you're a PhD, I don't know anything about science, Doug. I only do the type of science they pay me to, uh, <laughs> but, but I could go with that. Uh, thanks so much, man. Uh, of course we'll talk soon. I'll call back when you actually want to talk to atheists. Yeah. Gut sip, gut sick Gibbon. That's her name. Gut sick Gibbon. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I'm pocket locker 86 on uh, YouTube or Twitch, wherever people want to find me. Yeah. Put the link. If you have, I put it in the, in the live stream chat. And if it gets blocked, I'll try to bring it back. All right, appreciate that. Thank you so much, Doug. Yep, I'll see, see you ya. soon, bud. Ciao. Oh, I better mute this. Hello? Pizza Hut, may I have your order, please? Hi, I'd like uh, two large pepperoni pizzas. <laughs> oh, you're in luck. It's a two for one deal. So you're an atheist, really? right? Yeah, I am. Okay. <clears throat> What's up with Hello, you? Hello, long, long time listener. Um, first time caller? First, first, ex oh, you're, you're so... Uh, Welcome to the Rush Limbaugh I would Show. I say you're psychic if I wasn't. <laughs> uh, yes, but, um, yeah, a bit random. I just um, actually wanted to talk to you about this topic of well-being. Um, many, well, when I say, when I'm about to say many atheists, um, I'm really meeting like Matt Dillahunty, um, talks about well-being as a, as like the rules of the. And he left. That's okay. I was getting bored anyhow. <laughs> you can call back. I'm kidding. Unless the theist calls in first. Room's open for theists. Gutsick thinks she's a genius. Maybe she is enslaved by truth. I don't know. Has she been? I'm sure she's been tested. By the way, anybody who's uh, gone to graduate school has been tested for IQ. Uh, at least in the hard sciences. Was that the non stamp collector? Maybe it was. Call back uh, and finish your sentence on well-being. By the way, I like prefer net well-being. A little bit of suffering is okay once in a while, like if it's to help you in the long run, right? When was the last time you seriously thought about demons? I'd say 15 years ago, Grays. Like, seriously? It's amazing to me how many people believe in demons. I think I've said this before, but when I left Christianity, uh, I basically didn't have bad dreams anymore. Like, if you seriously believe in demons and Satan and spiritual warfare and end times stuff, you're going to have bad dreams once in a while. If, you're, if you seriously think God has a will for your life and that if you deviate from it, he will frown, you're going to have bad dreams once in a while. If you want to stop your bad dreams, become an atheist. You'll have, well, you'll have far fewer. Not true, you saw me last night. 
Yeah, I saw I saw you, Nick, last night, but I didn't see Erica. Was the last time you thought about Santa? <laughs> uh, someone asked me a similar question. My parents never taught me about the Easter Bunny or Santa as real. Th I mean, not even remotely real things, and I never taught my kids that. In my household, we follow truth. Oh, I'm just triggered, Jim Bob. God only has smiles for me. Not when you send bread of life. Rebecca, Rebecca, you're a sinner. You're a bad, bad girl. When you sin, God does not smile on you. He says, naughty, naughty girl. You bad, bad Rebecca. You don't sin. Only if you love me, you will obey my commandments, says Jesus. And once in a while, you disobey the commandments. And then God says, you don't love me today, Rebecca. And that should make you feel guilty. The Holy Spirit convicts you. Yeah, William Lane Craig needs to call in. Sorry, I, I, I made William Lane Craig look so ugly in that picture. Like, I apologize. I, I was rushed. I didn't do a good job in cropping. I apologize. But you get the hint, right? This represents God. Well, Leonardo DiCaprio is like a god. And look at the joy in William Lake Craig's face. Feeling warm and secure in the hands of his deity. Bread of Life says, I'm not a sinner. Do me a favor and count how many times in the New Testament that believers are called sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. That's one. Because believers are part of everyone. Rebecca, haven't you heard of this guy named uh, Ray Comfort? If you have ever, ever told a lie, you're a liar. If you've ever, ever stolen something, you're a thief. If you've ever, ever sinned, that makes you a sinner, bread of life. Come on. Can I, Ray Comfort, call in and, and teach this woman, bread of life, <laughs> the true gospel? Would you rather have James White or William Lake Craig on? Pardon me, says James White, because he, James White, um, I think I could get more direct answers. But, I don't know, that's a tough one. William Lake Craig, like in this sound clip, he's brutally honest. He says, I just, I need to feel good. So that's a tough question. But you know what? I could have both of them on at the same time and still tie half my brain behind my back. Just to make it fair. Another Rush Limbaugh line. Rooms open for theists. William Lane Craig with a Rebecca would be great. Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, well, he kind of looks like a mohawk. He like he has a mohawk thing happening. I was a sinner until I stopped believing in sin. Now I'm just your average schlub. Yeah, amen, bro guy.
I believe I've never, ever sinned. True story. You know why? Because sin entails the idea that God exists. A God exists. No God, no sin. Well, what's your standard of morality, Doug? Well, I use uh, unnecessary suffering, well-being. Well, that's just your subjective opinion. Yeah, <clears throat> that's right. And you subjectively chose God as your standard. No, no, he's the ontological standard. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you know that? Well, because the Bible tells me so. Mm-hmm. It just has to be. Mm-hmm. There's no God, there's no objective truth. Mm -hmm. How do you know there's objective truth? Because it just feels right. I mean, if there isn't, then we're just molecules in motion. Maybe we are just molecules in motion. But then that doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes you just, this is the way you talk about things like morality with theists. theists. You just say, okay, mm-hmm. Following William Lane Craig's comments, if it's mutually exclusive, do you think it's better to be wrong and happy or correct and unhappy? Ooh, Dale Wilson, you the man. Now, for me personally, I'm a pretty happy guy. Ask my wife. She's, my wife is way more stressed about life than me. She's a Christian. I follow the verse that don't worry about tomorrow, tomorrow will worry for about itself. I follow that verse way better than most Christians, and I'm an atheist. But I do agree that people who have more knowledge and, um, and who are not who see the world accurately like, let's pretend you knew everything there is to know about what's happening in the world right now. If you're happy, you're sick because the world is full of crap right now. Sure, there's good things happening, but there's a lot of crap. So if you're correct about what's happening in the world right now, at this moment, you should be weeping. Because guarantee you someone's being raped right now as we speak. In the world, somewhere. Guaranteed, someone's being killed, murdered, right now, as we speak. If you had knowledge of that. See, that's interesting. If this, uh, if the Abrahamic God is a personal God, which not all Christians believe that, you know, this God has emotions. This God knows everything that's happening right now. He should be constantly in tears. He should be like a God that's watching a... Uh, uh, some sad romance n movie. Like, how much Kleenex does God go through? More than a conquered. None of this disproves anything, Pine Creek. Okay. Oh, this will trigger some Christians. My default position is no God exists until it's proven that a God does. That's my default position. Is your def default position the opposite? That God exists until proven otherwise? Is it? Two separate default positions. Well, look at that. I don't have a alter ego. Don't worry, God is dead inside. Yeah, that movie, God's Not Dead, should really say God's dead inside. I was thinking I should start offering money to Theus to come on and talk to me. Would you guys support me in that?
Like I got a Venmo account with lots of money in it right now. That I probably will never use. Maybe I should start spending it on Theus. I don't know. How much money would it take for them to come on? 100 bucks. We'll start the bidding at $100 to uh, Inspiring Philosophy. Give you 100 bucks for 10 minutes of your time. But you're welcome to stay longer. But you're free to go after 10 minutes. That's $600 an hour. <laughs> Should we do it? <laughs> Actually, you can't get much done in 10 minutes. Can you give me like 20? 100 bucks for 20? There we go. How much should we pay uh, for William Lane Craig to come on? How much you guys think is fair? For 20 minutes, William Lane Craig. Two hundred bucks for twenty minutes. That's six hundred bucks an hour. All you have to do, and all you have to do is click a button. Then you can use that money for great things. Braxton Hunter, I'll give you a hundred bucks right now. Dead serious. Come on for 20 minutes. 100 bucks. You can take, you, take your wife out for dinner tomorrow night. On me. I'll Venmo you before we start talking. I'll transfer it right to you. If you, have just pay, if you don't have Venmo, I think I can do it via PayPal. And as soon as you get the funds, you click the button. Would you do it? <laughs> Offer money for every yes or no answer. I got to get rid of this picture. It's just too ugly. Does Braxton actively refuse to come on your show? Well, I've invited him many times. I think so. Braxton, if you've never heard this in your life, you're invited to come on. Um, who else should we offer money? Like, I'm dead serious. I think we could offer them money and they still wouldn't come on. It would have to be an exorbitant amount. Because I think they, they're scared of me for rhetorical reasons. Of course, they'd never admit that they're scared of me for evidential reasons. They would never say that. But they don't want to be asked lean yes, lean no questions. They want, that's, that's how you kill apologetics. Okay, so let me look at my, um, my playlist here. No, my videos. Oh yeah, what do you mean? How much money would it take for you to come on? 100 bucks for 15 minutes? Tim Barnett, same deal. Uh, Greg Kokel. Oh, Trent Horn, you owe me. I, you, you asked me to debate you. I said yes. Now, once you come on my show, people start on Twitter, start tweeting that Pine Creek's offering money to come in for 15, 20 minutes. I guess I could do it. And hopefully you have Venmo. If not, then I'll use PayPal through my friend's account. I, I guess I can do that. Um, let's see here. Trent Horn. I'm offering cash for 15 minutes of your time. Uh, make it 20. Oh, someone's here. Let's see. Yvonne, I better be careful. Hi, Yvonne. 
on. How are you? I'm all right. I wrote uh, my no, no, nothing. I'm saying is coming up on your chat. Oh really? Yeah, maybe I'm blocked. Yeah, I could be blocked. Why would you be blocked? Did you say something mean to me? Did you hurt my feelings? No, I'm trying to, but it's not working. You're trying to hurt my feelings, but it's not working. <laughs> I like you. I guess. Okay, type, <laughs> type something in the live stream chat right now, and I'll look see if I see it. And and turn oh, off your oh, other tab. Kind of... Turn off your other tab. How do I get rid of the feedback? You got to turn. You got to close off the other tab of the of you watching me earlier. Okay, I got you. Can you hear me now? I know you're over fifty, but that's no excuse. Seventy. I know you're over seventy, but that's no excuse. No, I'm just seventy. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm. I'm willing to be. I'm willing to play your theist for you. Oh, you're not a theist. Oh, I am. Oh, you are a theist. Well, then you don't have to play well, one. I mean, you just are one. Does a theist mean that you believe in God? It, that's what it means, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and you want to have a conversation, or you want me to ask you questions, or do you want to well, ask me questions? <clears throat> Whatever you want, but I can go first because, um, well, I, I need to know what type of theist you are. What, which God do you believe in? I believe that everybody is has a God that's inside of them. Oh, you're that type of theist. Ugh. But I believe there's one true God. Okay, what's that true God's name? Let's start with that. Okay, well, do you want the biblical version? Or do you just want, you know, the Jews call him Hashem, the Christians call him Yahweh Okay, okay, Jesus. okay, forget about the name. What's this God like? Describe this God. He's the uh, ultimate creator in level of con the highest level of consciousness that there is. Ugh, use the word consciousness. Another ugh. Consciousness. That means like something where you become aware of. That's that faculty that where you become aware. Okay. Anything? So he's a creator. Has the best consciousness. Anything else? Well, he creates and then he reforms. In other words. He's like, he's always creating something and then he reforms it according to the, his desire of what the, he wants the outcome to be. So he intervenes. It intervenes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Can you give an example in your life where it has intervened? Well, my husband died a couple of years ago and... You know, I can't go wherever I want to go. I can't do whatever I want to do. My body's letting me down. You know, he's intervening, <laughs> right? So, how has he intervened exactly? By making you sick? He's in control of nature. He's in control of nature and consciousness. Okay, so when I let go of this and it drops, that's God? Well, let me ask you this. If you want to, can you... Keep yourself alive. In a way, yeah. When your time comes. When my time comes. Yeah, like do you do you think you're gonna die one day, or do you think you're just gonna be able to keep yourself? No, I'm gonna alive be like Enoch. I'm gonna go straight to heaven. All right. Because <laughs> I'm the chosen one. Did you know, what you know that I'm a chosen one by God? I believe anything until it's proven wrong. You believe? I'm the opposite. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You believe anything until it's proven wrong. Okay. Yes. Do you believe that no gods exist until proven wrong? Yes. So you're, yes. you're an atheist now? No, no, because I was proven wrong. Oh, okay. And what, what showed you that you were wrong? Well, um, I, I found myself, you know, uh, searching and studying, and, but I never really found the, um, the answers until I was age 40. Then I had an experience where my my consciousness was completely shifted and it was destroyed it literally was destroyed and it, then i found it your consciousness was moment. destroyed consciousness so you were dead no just my consciousness i it, that's the funny thing is your body is not your consciousness it has its own consciousness your consciousness is your ego and it was completely <sighs> annihilated
You know, Yvonne, I'll just be very honest with you. When I hear the sounds coming out of your mouth, I just get tired. I know. People have said I sound like a cold uh, bucket of magic. You sound like a mix. Well, I'm not a, insulted. You, you sound like a mix of new age combined with. No, I'm talking about my experience, and you're telling me I didn't have an experience. See, now you're getting defensive. I didn't tell you what? you'd. I didn't tell you you didn't have an experience. Okay. But just, it's interesting that you went there. Why do you think you said, and now you're telling me, Doug, that I didn't have an experience? Why because did you? Because as soon as I told you what I experienced, you said, "Oh, you're so tired. You just tell me what everybody, you know." And you just started grouping. Okay, but what's your guess? Why I said that to you? Because you didn't want to hear what I had to say. Obvious. No, it's because I've heard this so many times in my life. I've had this experience, and therefore X. And that X can be it's, Allah, it can be Yahweh, it can be I know, crystals, I know. it can be vibrations. Right. right. So you're and just another one of those people. You. Huh? You're just another one of those people who's attributing these experiences to God. No, I didn't. I didn't. Actually, I didn't. I, I was trying to tell you something that happened to me. Okay. So, so uh, but my question was how you said your default was you're an atheist until proven otherwise and i asked well what happened to you what made you and then you start talking about some experience so tell me what this experience was that led you to the god you believe in now okay all right i, I was sick i went on a fast and I, I went on a fast for a long time i didn't know what was going to happen to me but it it led to a a feeling of real well-being and all that stuff after about a year then after two years after that I went into a constriction. I went like my mind, it, it first it expanded beyond my mind and then it started constricting like an hourglass and it, and I lost all consciousness, but I was still alive. I could still go to school. I could still cook for my family. I could still do everything. And, and yet my mind was completely black. So I don't even know if I should go on with this because when you say things like I lost all my consciousness, but I could still cook and do stuff like, that doesn't compute because to there's me. A, there's a, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There's a consciousness beyond your body. How do you know that? You can still... Okay. How do you know there's a consciousness beyond your body? Because I could still function with my body, and I, I had muscle memory. That's because you I had a... I cook, I knew how to do that. That's because you had a consciousness within your body. Right. So how do you know there's a consciousness well, outside your body? Well, the Your, consciousness, your consciousness outside your body. Because that's what you're saying, well, it's right? It's not really outside. Well, it's not really outside, but it's the ego is not really a true consciousness. It's a developed consciousness by the world, by your environment. Any psychologist will tell you that. You don't need to have a theist to tell you that. That there's what? Uh, consciousness is developed by your surroundings as it mixes with your body. Okay. So I'm still asking you the same question. <clears throat> How do you know that there's this God out there? Well, when the ego was removed and all that was left was my body in its natural How do you know your ego was removed? Because whatever I thought I was, I was no longer that. How do you know that's true? Because I experienced it. You got to take my word for it. If you think I'm crazy, that's fine. But if you, if you want to listen to what I'm really trying to tell you, this is what happened to all the people in the Bible. They could not explain it right, but that's what happened. To if them. I experience a pink unicorn floating above... Oh, see, my... now, there's no pink unicorn in the Bible, and you know that. Not, I never said there was. If I experienced a pink unicorn in my office right now, hovering right there, does that mean it's true? For me, no. Not for, for me you, either. Maybe. Okay. So just because you experience something, that doesn't mean that it's real outside of you, correct? It's not true for you. It's true. It was true for me. But what it did was it explained what the Bible was about. It explained that God changes your consciousness. And I didn't understand that until I had that experience. And then all of a sudden, all the prophets, Abraham, Jesus, Moses, all of them made sense. Before that point, none of it made sense. I thought it was a crazy book. But that experience showed me that there's a greater consciousness that can destroy your consciousness and take over and build a new consciousness in you.
Okay. That's true. You didn't like me. I can tell. It's all right. I'm no, no. It's just me. I just feel like you're uttering nonsense. I mean, I because every almost every other word you say, I feel like asking, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? What do you mean? Like you're just spouting words. Right, okay, like, ask me. I'll, I'll. I won't say anything. And I'll just answer you. All right. Ask me anything. Anything. If you want. If you want. I don't want to force you. Why do you believe that there's a God outside of you? Outside of me, he's outside and in me. He's not just outside okay. of me. Okay, why do you believe there's a God outside of you? Well, I don't know if it's, see, that's just it. I've, God has been redefined. Like, it's not like a pink unicorn. God is the force of nature do that is able to create and reform form at the at, you know as it will so, so is nature. god nature yes is all of nature god no does god have a mind yes does nature have a mind yes Oof. what is a mind consciousness <laughs> does rock have a rock have consciousness yes why Very do you small. believe a rock has consciousness because it's a part of nature so anything that's a part, part of nature, nature has consciousness yes so everything has consciousness if it's in nature right so even though it's small even though what it, it depends on the, the form it takes like a rock would not have very it wouldn't be thinking about the animate a rock wouldn't be thinking animate and animate doesn't think about human or vegetative i mean man thinks about all of the below it but there's the animate the vegetative the the still the vegetative animate and then man do you know what new and age is old. huh do you know what new age is would you consider yourself a new age person no 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 new age do you have any crystals in your house no <laughs> no have you ever uttered the word vibrations yes when talking about God. It's a physics term. Everything vibrates. I know, but do you use the word vibrations when talking about God? If I'm, it's nature, then it's part of God. If vibration is not part of nature, then, then no. Is nature real? Does it really exist or is it just in our consciousness? That's something that I have not 100% proof for. Is it only in our consciousness? Well, obviously, if when we die, it's no longer in our consciousness. Do you want me to think like you? No. Do you want anybody to think like you? No, not at all. Is there any benefits of thinking like you? Not one thing except for I'm at peace, and I'm completely content with what I know. Other, if you don't want that, then there's no okay, point in Okay, it. so you're at peace. If you were wrong yes. about what you've been telling me, would you want to know it? Absolutely. Is there any way to figure out if you're wrong about what you've been telling me? Uh, I think it would have to be revealed, but yeah. Revealed by how? By nature. <laughs> you know, I'm part of it. I'm part of nature. Be specific. What would you have to learn, see, hear, think in order to say everything that I thought about reality is false? It would have to present itself to me as a reality. Okay, but be specific. For example, I can't think of anything that's false that would be presented as false since I've spent seventy years discovering what is true. So, in order for what it could do, if something if something presented itself to me that would obliterate something that I thought was true, then I could say, okay, I thought that was true, but this over here shows me that that was not complete. Like, let's take the rock. You said a rock has consciousness, yet yeah, right? Right. What would it take for you to say I was wrong about that? I w it wouldn't take much. I could just, I, I'm not going to argue about that. I, I just feel like it's, <clears throat> this is what I think about. I know that nature must have consciousness even through rocks because everything must know something about, maybe a rock doesn't know it's a rock. Maybe a rock, what, a, it doesn't know it, but it's got to have some kind of consciousness. I don't know why I think that. You don't know why you think a rock has consciousness? 
I just think because it's part of nature. That's the only reason. Hmm. If it, you know, if it was a made up rock, I wouldn't think that. Like if you came up and you said, look at this cute rock I made, I wouldn't think it had consciousness. What's your educational background, may I ask? I'm a, I'm a, a counselor. In, for who? Who do you counsel? Well, nobody now. I'm 70 years old. I know, but when I, you did, when you did. Oh, uh, just, you know, people. Just people? People who were in, in uh, trying to better themselves at the time. I got a degree in it. It's nothing. I didn't spend too much time doing it because I don't really like talking to people that much. So I found out it wasn't really for me, but I do have a degree in counseling. Okay. And I, I, I prefer doing house cleaning to counseling. Okay, Vaughn. Thanks for coming on. I think I know why I you're blocked welcome. you. No. What? Because of the what? stuff you're saying now. Why? Because it's just so frustrating. It's like... Like your your belief system is like jello. It just what what tell me? No, you can't just say that. You gotta be more specific. What is like jello? Well, for I example, know? you just five minutes ago said a rock has consciousness. And then I and then Can you prove to me it doesn't? You can't? Come on. You can't prove to me it doesn't. Can you go up to it and say, Hey, can you hear me? You can't what you don't know. And I shouldn't have said that. Because I really don't know. It just seems. Hold, like Yvonne, hold still. Hold still. Don't, don't move. Yeah. Right, right behind you. There is a pink unicorn. Yeah. You're just trying to make me feel stupid. You're not going to be able to do it. There's no. It's there. It's fun. there. Until well, until you prove to me it isn't. It. It's there. You see what I you did? You can see it. That's cool. Hi, unicorn. <laughs> but you see how you do? You understand how silly it is to believe anything until proven otherwise i just told you why i must have I, if your listeners are listening i must have said to you at least six times i thought i think that it's possible that rocks have consciousness because they're a part of nature now what kind of consciousness i can't tell you i know my cat has consciousness i it has the consciousness of a cat that much i can tell you it does what a cat does it doesn't do my dishes. Okay, thanks, Yvonne. Okay. JG in the house, and now he's gone. <sighs> what? What is wrong with the world? What is wrong? Someone help me. Okay, Brandon, what do you want to say? <laughs> I, I love the way you do, how you deal with people, man. It's, I just love it. Um, this, that lady sounded kind of like she was a pagan, if I'm, if, if I'm using that word correctly. She was everything. But, yeah, it, it, it sounded And like nothing at the same the time. <laughs> yeah, she sounded like she was all over the place. It's, yeah didn't really make sense. Angel was consciousness and, and the ego was, what did she say about that? Um, <laughs> ego is about... Uh, Anyhow, do you have anything do you want to ask me? Or um, say? Besides the other caller? About what she said? No, not really. Okay, it's... take care. Am I sending Yvonne $100? No, <laughs> no. No, a cash offer wasn't open just to anyone. It was open to certain people I named. Don't lower your standards for Jesus. Thanks again, Doug. Thanks for the love and support chat. This super chat is sponsored by Pocket Locker. Oh, you're buying advertising, Jay. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, Yvonne should pay me $100 for listening to that. For Was, was that 20 minutes? Felt like it. Oh, 
I, I, I desire a theist who actually knows what they believe and can specifically state it. No, that wasn't the hate your wife, dude. That was Brandon. He's an atheist. My pet rock was a sociopath. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much would we offer Frank Turek? I'll tweet him right now. Oh, Atangelo. Why do I get all the same people in? My life is gone. <laughs> Let's see if your audio works today. Yeah, I think it's okay. No, your audio sucks again. Yeah, and my audio sucks too. It's clipping, right? Check one, two. It's hot. No, re try refreshing after each change. Is it better now? There you go. Okay, okay. okay remember what so, you just did, and then always do that whenever you go onto a live stream. Okay. So, Doc, I am um, um, coming here to your live stream because of the last time I tried to join, but you were um, uh, saying that I was uh, too often guest at your, at your channel, so uh, I left for today. But I saw you saying that um, uh, you were suffering from uh, cognitive dissonance as a, a believer and that you are not having that anymore. And that sounded very strange to me. So can you... No, no, I said it was lower. I said atheism has the lowest amount of cognitive dissonance. Yes, and I'm shocked by that. Um, You're shocked. Um, yeah, I think that's just crazy. I think atheists suffer from extreme cognitive dissonance at least if they think about the uh, okay now you're going to start talking about uh, life from from not life and then you're going to talk about the cosmological argument and fine-tuning blah 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 and then we're finished you let, are, let's you, let's imagine we went through that conversation for 30 minutes and then now what so i disagree with you i think that you are Fair suffering enough. from the biggest um cognitive dissonance i'm like yvonne i'm at peace yeah, yeah i mean uh, that's just self-delusion i'm sorry okay are you fine with that i mean it's not my problem it's your problem but i mean you are influencing others i, I mean i mean I so you have no cognitive people. dissonance you have none well, of course, there are things which I don't understand, and I leave it uh, for my tete a tete with the Lord when I am there, and I will ask him there, how is this and that, which I don't understand today. And I can give the same answer for some of the questions you might pr pr uh, propose to me. Well, there's sure there's some things I don't understand. I think you cannot make any sense whatsoever of our reality okay. without the Creator. Okay. I mean, I am pointing out your problem. It's not mine. Uh, something inside me doesn't think it's a huge problem. That's because you are ignoring the implications. The implications? Yes. What's in, which imp implications? That's, I mean, you are in a severe state of cognitive dissonance because you are suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. Okay. And then you know what I'm going to say now, right? Well, uh, my recommendation is deal with it because I've met people who said that they became atheists because of Pine Creek. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And I was thinking, wow, if when this guy appears in front of the Wait a minute, Lord, what are those things behind your head? It. Are those inner tubes? Or is that this, those speakers? No, 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 behind you. Like way in the corner. Oh, that's my that's my loudspeaker horn system. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, it is. Why are you a musician, or why do you have such huge speakers? No, I'm an audiophile. You're an, you love audio. Yeah. Like, do you, are you in an apartment or house? In a house. Okay, thank goodness. Have your 
neighbors ever complain to the police about you? No. Okay, so you don't play the music too loud. I do. <laughs> you do play it loud. Absolutely. Okay, can I, you do I, me a I favor play. and crank that those puppies up? I want to hear what they sound like. Like play, play Yeah, I play something out of them. Can you do it from your computer? Yeah, I have to. I, I'll do it next time. I will I will crank up everything before I, I join the Because those speakers I, behind you are way more interesting than anything you have to say. <laughs> yeah, and um I built the system. You built it? Did yeah. you actually get inner tube tires? Well, I did build um, all the machinery to be, to make the horns. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You, see, you should go on atheist live streams and talk about that. It's way more interesting. I, I think I think the big majority doesn't even know what that is behind me. You know. Okay. Let's let's see if we if. Let's explore your cognitive dissonance um, or the things. What, what do you, about Christianity don't you understand? Uh, well, the, these things come up. I mean, f for, I think, for example, animal suffering is something which I don't understand. Why uh, with the fall, everything had to be involved as well as animals. That's a good one. That's a very good one. And yeah. another good one, like when I was a Christian, is um, all the Old Testament atrocities. Like, why did Jesus command the death of children? Well, another one, to be honest with you, Doug, I mean, I don't understand why slavery isn't being um, called out as wrong. In yeah, the world. that's so another good way. one. You know. And, I mean, I, and I how does the death... These things. I mean, you know, I, I deal with that by saying I've not been there. I I don't know what the circumstances were for why it wasn't called out in a more clear way. So I just leave that for once I am with the Lord and ask him. Well, you know, here's a here's a out. here's an explanation for um, the animal suffering and the Old Testament atrocities that it's a man made book. I mean, of course, you can say that, Doc, but. I, I'm sorry. Don't I mean, all those problems so go away? Evidence. Like the verses that say, uh, go and kill the Amalekites and the Canaanites, and God commands it. Like as a Christian. I actually, don't see, I actually don't see a problem with that because these were evil people which did offerings of... I'm talking about the toddlers and the babies. infants. Go kill the infants. I mean, they, they, these, and and I mean, the animals. Folk, go kill the animals, it says too. Yeah, as I'm saying. Do you have a problem with killing understand. animals and infants? Of course I do. Okay. I mean, now, saying, now here's an explanation for all that. So you, on the one hand, you could say God really did command this in history, and you don't understand that because well, why kill the cows? Why kill the babies? Why not adopt them? Like that's one explanation uh, that God did it. That, but for uh, the babies, I have an explanation because they would have grown, they would have known about their history, and then they would have again been hostile against the Jews and that would have continued the problem. And also the influence of uh, the religions, their syncretistic religions, which um, caused the Jews to, to um, make these does mixes. The, does of, the text uh, actually say that though? No, it doesn't. The text does no, not say my, that God my... knew that every 100% of every infant would grow up to be like their parents. Text doesn't say oh, of that. Of course, that's... Yeah, it doesn't. But so you're importing explanations I, into the text that are not there, right? It's just my explanation, which um, to I make you feel better, be to help lower <laughs> your cognitive dissonance. Yeah, you can you can say it's that. I mean, as I said, if you say, "Well, the Bible isn't true, dog," then you remain with the entire problem to explain our physical existence. And honestly, I don't. You, you, you have no explanation. No atheist has an explanation, and the, the and the, the physical universe. And you have no explanation design. why God's nature is the way it is. Yeah, I don't. Of course not. Yeah, so we're in the same boat. Well, the thing is, I don't understand why there is something rather than not. I don't know why God exists rather than not. But I believe that God's power and intelligence explains our existence. And that is for me rationally. Sure, satisfied. sure, it can, it can explain it, but that doesn't mean it's true. No, no, you. I mean, 
we've got, as you said, we've gone through this. Yeah, we've gone through and, this. And but I want to ask, I want to talk about the atonement because that's probably the most important part about Christianity is that Jesus came and died for your sins, right? Yes. Do you believe Jesus died? Yes, he died on the cross for our sins. Every, what do you do? You think Jesus' soul died? No, of course. When once he died physically on the cross, um, since I mean, he 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 didn't die afterwards, right? So he died, but his, didn't die. His physical existence. Uh, he he died on the cross physically. Okay, so you believe then? since Jesus soul then died but just his body that in order to atone for human free will sinning is accomplished to the death of carbohydrates proteins and fats I think that um, cognitive dissonance is rising <laughs> no no I think that his entire suffering that he went through is something that we deserve and he he, he took it on him the wages of sin is not our... suffering it's death jesus could have that died of a massive cross. heart attack instantaneously and the, it still accomplished the goal so my question well, is do you believe that it was the death of proteins carbohydrates and fats that atone for sin if you ask me why he chose to die on the cross the way he did i don't know why he, he did he not atone our sins in another way I that's not my know. question so, my question is do you believe that your sins were atoned for to the death and resurrection of meat i believe that his entire uh, via crucis and dying on the cross um was what uh, provided us the atonement right so the answer is yes you believe that your sins were atoned for through the death and resurrection of meat amino acids proteins carbohydrates lipids fats and some minerals all combined how can how was, can he, sins be how can right? the spiritual sins of someone be atoned for with just mere flesh he was suffering right he, he was being tortured uh, in the in the entire uh, thing was it the suffering from, that atoned for sin or his death I think it, it was the whole thing it was a that's not scriptural tangible. Was, uh, well read Josiah 53 what does it say there uh, I don't know. I, what does it say there? Did you say Isaiah 53? Yes. Oh, yeah. I know Isaiah 53. Yeah. What does it say there? Well, it there says many things. Prophecy and description. It yes, says, there is a It says, oh, by the way, it says. Prophecy about. It says there's no mention that, uh, that atonement will be accomplished through the shedding of blood in Isaiah 53. It says by knowledge. Near the you end. know that is another interesting topic i was recently at um, a muslim chat and they asked me about if it is the blood that actually has provided the atonement and then they they said that in the old testament there were offerings which didn't include blood so this is another um interesting issue i mean um so isaiah 53 how, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out yeah, of dry yeah, ground. Yeah. Who's he talking to? Who's, who's saying I that? that this, well, the prophet uh, is, is Josiah, right? Who's, the, who's the suffering the prophet, servant there? Josiah. Christ. Who's the suffering servant in the chapter prior to Isaiah 53? Well, I've studied that talk, and there is a large consensus. Just answer it. Prophecy. Just answer it in a couple words. Who's the well, suffering? I don't know. You don't know? In, in the prior um, chapter, I don't know. I just know about this. The answer is Israel. And what, who's the suffering servant right. in, the, in Isaiah 54? The answer is Israel. Okay. Who's the suffering servant in Isaiah 53? Answer? Well, you I say Jesus. Well, Isn't that convenient? You can call it convenient. For me, it is a precise prophecy and description of Christ. Precise? Is, does Isaiah 53 ever mention a resurrection? Well, I, I suggest that we read it and then you can see. 
Yes or okay, no? Sure. Lean you yes or lean no. Does Isaiah 53 say that Jesus will rise from the dead? No. Thank you. You just said Isaiah 53 is precise. Well, yes, what? look here. It wasn't Surely very precise took, about the resurrection because uh, it doesn't even mention it. And carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. Was Jesus crushed? Yes. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. He was hung on a cross, wound, but was he crushed? Well, he, wa he was beaten. Of course, he was. Beaten is different crushed. than crushed. You can take an but orange and crush it. And you can take an orange and pierce it. Very clearly what they just said before, that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we, wounds. Were, we are healed. Yes, wounds, we, we are healed. So yeah, um, and what would a Jew say about that? Who's who's the one wounded? What would a Jew say? I think this is a clear description of the suffering of Christ. Well, yeah, you think that because you're a Christian. But what would a Jew say, say? Is my question. I mean, if you want to go with the interpretation, well, they don't actually really know what is meant by by that. Uh, or they actually just don't re don't really know what Isaiah fifty three is saying. Is what you're saying. Have you yeah, ever talked to an Orthodox know. Jew about this? No. I encourage but, you to. Um, yeah, but I've read uh, like uh, Arnold Fruchtenbaum. He, he is a Jew. He is a Messianic Jew. And he, yeah. I think he is the, he, I mean, he is the foremost expert on these topics. And for him, it is clear. They I have a really guy know, who's a who, Jew by heritage and is now a Messianic Jew and believes in Jesus. And he says X. Yeah, I gotcha. I mean, in the end, it is a question of interpretation. You disbelieve it, but we as Christians, we believe that it is. Pre I mean, of course you believe that. That doesn't mean yeah. it's true. For me, it's true, but I mean, it doesn't mean but, that everyone has but, to believe. But it's I, true, I thank right? you that you admit that your sins were atoned for through the. So I'll even give you suffering through the suffering and death of meat. Jesus' body. Okay. Well, I mean, it wasn't just meat, it was Christ, right? Oh. So you think there's something special about his amino acids? I think um, the, the, the special thing about him is that he paid as an innocent man. He didn't sin, but nonetheless, they... they um, do you think your sins? Do you think your sins could be atoned for if they just cut off Jesus's arm and burnt it, and then Jesus brought it back, his arm back to life, and reattached it? Do you think you could atone for sins that way? I don't ask myself these questions. No, it's an interesting question because if you're saying, "Well, this is Christ's meat," well, his arm is meat, so let's. Could he have atoned for the sins of the world through the death and resurrection of his arm? No. How about both arms? No. How about both legs? No. It needs the whole body, the whole piece of meat to be killed. See, this is right. this is so, a pro this is a problem for you because you cannot say Jesus really died in his whole being because then the trinity becomes a duity. And so now you're left with saying, well, he like Princess Bride, he just mostly dead. His body But was you dead. know what your problem is, Doc? What? You know what your problem is? If everything of this isn't true, that's no problem for me. Right? If what I'm saying is true, then there's no problem for you? Yeah. No, no, no. The Apostle Paul disagrees with you. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, you ought to be pitied. You should pity yourself. Yes? No. Yeah. I don't think so. You don't think you should you pity know, yourself I, if Jesus didn't rise from the know, dead? You're you know, believing in a lie. Like, now listen, Doc, as you make thought experiments, I do these kind of things too. And I've thought about this. What would be if my entire faith is just an illusion? It's just a self-delusion. Because you might go to hell. That's what's at stake here, Otangelo. No. If you're no, wrong, you no. might go to hell. No. Yes. No. Yes. If if you are if you are right, 
we die and it's over. And that accounts as well for me, right? What? That's what you believe. Once we die, it's over. No, no, but Isn't I'm, I'm talking about, I'm ta yeah, you're right. If I believe that if you and I die, yeah. it's over. So, but if, so, you, if both of us are wrong, potentially, this is what I'm getting at. If both of us are wrong, both of us will go, might go to hell. Well, I mean, you can do um, a comparative um, study of other religions and then, I mean... Uh, um, and then Christianity will I win, don't right? Think, absolutely. Yeah. I think there is no comparison of Christ with any religion in the world. What if it's true that only atheists go to heaven and everybody else goes to hell? Wouldn't that be funny? I actually hope there's a God out there who operates that way, who realizes... I have not given sufficient sufficient evidence for my existence, so I will reward those who deny me and punish those who accept all these man-made religions. Can you, I mean, that could be true, Otangelo. Can you show me, can you give me an account of one atheist which made a supernatural experience and then based on that believes the way which you just suggested? Me? Yeah, me. Do you know? Yeah, really? I, don't I just said it. You. But let me let me tell you, <laughs> yesterday I had a nice conversation with the guy from Norway because he wrote a science paper in 2006, which I thought was fascinating. I wrote him and we had a private chat and he comes from a very, um, um, a t let's say, the big majority of uh, the Nordic countries, they are atheists, right? And I asked him, uh, so based on the science paper that you wrote, what would you say in regards of uh, ontological things and so forth? And he said, well, I'm a Christian. And I was surprised and asked him, so how did you come to be a Christian? And he said, I had actually a supernatural experience with Christ. And I said, well, let me uh, know about it. And he said, well, my wife is always comes down to these experiences, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't base my faith, faith just in, in science and things like that. But what he, the account that he told me, it's not just the first one. I've heard it several times. Do you lower and your said, your ep epistemic and, bar me, like William Lane Craig? No, let me just finish the account to that. And he said that I was um, agnostic and didn't believe in these kind of things. But uh, my wife gave me a Bible and I suddenly had this experience where I, Jesus, um, I had an encounter with Jesus and I really, um, uh, things just became clear to me and I felt. Oh, how, how Tangelo, this me. is great. Do you, do you personally believe that he had an experience of Christ? Yes. Do you personally believe that he saw Jesus with his own eyes? I, he didn't go into details if he saw Jesus or things like that. Okay, what do, what do you imagine happened? Know. Do you think he actually saw Jesus with his own eyes, do, if you were to guess? It could be. But do you personally think that's what happened? If you were to guess. I don't know. I mean, it is possible. Why not? I didn't ask you if it's possible. I asked you... Well, I don't know. He didn't say it to me if he saw Jesus or not. But well, there are. Okay, other, let's say he was here. Where... Let's say he was here to describe it. And I say, okay, before he answers with Tangela, I want you to place a bet. I want to ask him if he saw Jesus with his own eyes. And before he answers, do you are you going to bet money that he did or he didn't? What would you say? Well, I've seen. I've heard other accounts where people say that they say a bright light. They saw um, um, a man, a bright light. He, they couldn't see the, the face or something like that, but they knew it is Jesus. So it is possible. Hi, Nathan. It sounds like they didn't know. <laughs> hey, Dan. No, as I said, I didn't ask um, him in regards if he saw Jesus or not. But that's what uh, you should have asked him. Yeah, it's, so, it's sort of strange that you believe that this is, I, you know, evidence of, of a ridicule, um, you know, Christian kind of religious experience, right? Considering how sparse the actual details of what happened are. 
I mean, if you study it, you, you will find many um, accounts of people which had such experiences in a more precise and detailed manner, some in less. But anyway, I will have, I, have a, I, I mean, I will have a, a public chat with him on my um, YouTube channel in about two weeks. Or okay, so. Tangelo, pretend I'm a, ask him. Tangelo, pretend I'm a Christian right now. Okay. And I tell you, yesterday, last night, I saw Jesus. I saw him with my own eyes, heard him with my ears. I touched him. I even felt the wounds in his hands and feet. Would you at all, as one Christian to another, would you be skeptical of that claim? No. What Your answer is no, you would not be skeptical? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be skeptical because that's not the first time that I hear people having these encounters and experiences. Were you skeptical the first time you heard it? Uh, the first time I heard it, it was when I, when I, when I, um, started to believe and people in my church in Switzerland, they had also these kind of experiences. So you put the things, the dots together. If you hear something here and something there, then obviously that increases your confidence that these hey, uh, potential, experiences which they potential, are true. I saw, you're not gonna believe this. I saw Elvis yesterday, the real Elvis, the one you know, who sold all those records, made all those movies. And I talked to him at Starbucks. Are you skeptical of that? Do you have a suspicious mind, Atangela? <laughs> Are you skeptical of that? Yeah. Lean yes or lean no? Oh, yes, I am. We are okay. talking about Now, God, what right? if I told you, Nathan and I, both, we say with a straight face, both of us, we saw Elvis at Starbucks yesterday. Are you skeptical? Lean yes, lean no. Can you tell me about other people who had that experience? Two is not good enough. What if I gave no. you ten? Are you skeptical? It, it raises it. It raises obviously the the confidence. How many you how many right, people uh, would you need to have in order for your belief switch goes? Oh yes, they actually did have uh, coffee with Elvis. Ten, twenty, thirty. Well, I don't know, Pine Creek, but you know, I think another important factor here is the spiritual. And obviously, if you don't see things with the spiritual eye, then you cannot <laughs> understand spiritual well, I saw things. Elvis with my spiritual eye. Yeah. Me too. I mean, you you listen to his music and you it, you can't help but say it's all spiritual. But he stole that from the African Americans. I mean, there are people which glorify Elvis as God, right? So maybe they have these kind of Attention, though, that you have about. lowered your bar of skepticism for Christianity because you want it and desire it to be true. And you lowered your bar uh, about skepticism and disbelief in God because you want to be it's true. Oh, What's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, you fumbled how you said that, but I know what you mean. Um, I will change my mind in an instant. If Jesus, if you say in the name of Jesus and claim to do the miracles that Jesus did, right here, right now, you could crush my worldview. I would become an atheist here and right now if you could demonstrate that the natural physical world is all there is. And so how how would I do that? Ways. How would I do that for you? That, that be would specific. Be your problem. That would be your problem. But you know what I see? Atheists they very usually ask me to prove be God's existence, and obviously I cannot do that. But they cannot prove that the natural physical world is all there is either. Okay, you know so what? Is, I'm going to give you. A... I'm going to give you that God exists, but I'm talking about Christianity right now. If you were to light up my water soap nap napkin in the name of Jesus, my confidence in Christianity will go sky high. You know what is there I anything, think about you? Though? Is there anything that you, know you could say that's Doug, that clear Doug, cut honestly, that would cause you to honestly, disbelieve in Christianity? Doug, honestly, I think your burden of proof is silly. And I think I've t told you that previously. It's not silly. I think you agree with that burden of proof. And and but I can demonstrate silly. it. It's, it's silly. No, I, mean, I can demonstrate. Watch this. Would you rather spend an hour 
reading God's word and meditating upon his word or spend one hour with the physical, tangible Jesus as he was in the first century today? Which would you rather have? The second, of course. Thank you. You've just admitted that you share with me your standard of that type of standard of evidence. You're saying no, I would desire. No, I not say that. I would prefer it if that would be possible. Right. It, is well, possible. it is possible. Right? as well. You've just said that your friend has such an experience. Yes, it is and possible. Many other people, and you connect the dots between all those cases. So, so not. Well, only... he didn't ask. Well, he didn't ask for that in the first place. I don't know why some certain people have this kind but of the, revelation, like the Apostle Paul. It's not the fact that, it, it's the not the Paul asking didn't that's ask relevant, for right? That and it's not the, the, it's not the asking that's relevant, right? though, right, Angelo. What's relevant is that God does sometimes do this sort of thing. Yeah. So, so it's within God's power and it's within his desire sometimes to do that sort of thing. So it's not outside of the realm of possibility that God would do something like that and, uh, and provide it as evidence for Doug, right? Well, this conversation, Nathan, comes down to what is um, a reasonable epistemological framework upon which you can come to reasonable conclusions in regards to our worldview. Obviously. And, and, like, and, what's the point of saying and, that? Right? Well, because I think you guys are... True or false, you just read that. Did you just read no, that off I your didn't. screen? No, I didn't. Sure looks like you did, because you looked. Uh, you have more than one monitor, yeah. right? No, I don't, and I, I didn't read it. Okay. I, I'm skeptical. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so Tangela, so you know where I'm coming from. And if, if God does not reveal himself like he did to uh, the disciples, uh, to Elijah in 1 Kings 18, then I'll go to hell. That's that. That's your choice. Yeah. And I respect it. What I'm and I will lead other people that, to hell What with I'm me. upset with you, dog, <laughs> is that people come to me and tell me I've become an atheist because of power. How many people have come to you and said that? One. Yeah, okay. That was a flag waving phony Christian anyhow, right? There wasn't a true Christian That's to begin with. That's a precious soul which will expand eternity. In that person was headed God. to hell anyhow, Totangelo. They weren't a true Christian. <laughs> no one can take them out of the Father's hand. <laughs> Now you got. Me. I did you a favor, Otangelo. I I called the herd of these fake Christians. You should be thanking me, Otangelo. The problem here is that we just can't go on together with suspicious minds. <laughs> Let that hang like the <clears throat> bad. But you know, Nathan, since we had our last interaction where I was at your stream and you asked me, what is my confidence that God exists? Do you remember my answer? Um, I'm going to guess because this is what all crazy people say, 100%. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Everyone who's wrong, like this isn't just about the God question, like people who are wrong about politics, people who are wrong about like climate change or whatever, it's always 100%. Mm, okay, you got me now. Right. I mean, but isn't it interesting how without remembering, I could infer, well, what do people who are wrong about things say? <laughs> well, as I said, you just got me now. But I mean, we will know who was right and wrong when we die, right? Well, or we won't because we'd be dead. Yeah, but um, if uh, if you resurrect and um, then... Uh, well, then we I'd know, Jesus, right? But... The, yeah, right. But if so it doesn't happen, then I wouldn't saying. know, so... Yeah, well, I mean, as I said to Doug, if you guys are right, it will be no problem for me because I will be dead and that's it. But if well, I am yeah, right, then you guys will have right. a big problem. Right, but you're risking uh, the fact that not only am I wrong, but the Jews are wrong, the Muslims are wrong, uh, Hindus are pluralistic, so it doesn't matter. But there's, you're going to hell in someone's worldview. Oh, yeah, I, I tend to think that God, if, if God exists, would reward people for like believing things responsibly because that's virtuous and so people who believe things without good enough evidence and i would kind of put you in that camp potential would be punished by that type of god right whereas people who are genuinely atheists and, and because that's you know the, the kind of reasons that they have support atheism um good they wouldn't be punished and so that's a type of god right that's on the table as well you know, um, a standard answer to Pascal's Vega is just, um, well, you don't know if there is another hell uh, of another religion. You don't know which religion is true. 
you know, this is a standard answer. And my, my answer to that is, well, the thing is that there is no comparison of any world religion compared to Christ. Well, there is, right? Because I just did that. So that's just ridiculous. Like, yeah. I mean, you, you can say that, but if, you, if you're going to, so, so standardly, right, one, you don't have to use infinities, but standardly people are going to say, well, there's infinite value in the afterlife. And you just multiply that by whatever your credence is. That's like the probability of your belief. Um, I'm sorry if the viewers are going down, Doug, in uh, <laughs> the, the probability of your belief towards that particular outcome obtaining, right? So suppose you have, you know, like even 0.1 um, of a credence towards God existing, and you think it's it, there's an infinitely valuable he heaven, well, you multiply 0.1 by infinity, you get infinity, and so there's an infinity of utility, right? But as long as I've got any other heaven, no matter how low my credence is, as long as it's not, you know, it's not infinitesimal, I just multiply that by an infinity, which I've concocted into that alternative God, and I've got an infinity as well, um, an infinity of expected value. So, um, I mean, you can say you can't compare it, but I mean, that's patently just not true because, I mean, I just, it, Muslims have a different theology, Hindus have a different theology. I mean, Buddhists have like 10 hells, right, in certain theologies, and that sounds even I worse. I mean, Nathan, I was just recently at um, Khalil's uh, uh, stream about... Uh, isn't he arrested? Um, hasn't he been they... arrested for abusing someone? No, I I, I hear that, wow. but um, he's a free man. So, who? Okay. But anyway, and I, I a guy, him... an atheist who converted to Islam. But then I'm pretty sure he yeah. was arrested. People were saying, people were sharing his uh, like thingy sheet, whatever. If he's an atheist converted to Islam, he wasn't a true atheist to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I asked him, can you back up the claim of Islam that Jesus, that it wasn't Jesus that died on the cross, but that it was somewhere, somebody else? And he said, well, it's in the Bible. And when I hear that, I said, what? <laughs> Show me that. And it was so easy to demonstrate him that, that his claim was not backed up. Is it, what's and, this got to do with what we were just talking about? Sorry. Yeah, I will explain you. I think that Islam and other religions, they are so low when it comes to actually back up what their claims are. Oh, but really? When you look into Christian, yeah. I mean, who wrote the Quran? We, we have 66 books, 45 different authors in the Bible. We have, we don't even, they don't even know who wrote No, no, I've asked this the, question to many Muslims Quran. and they have given me specific names and dates. Yeah, a hundred years after and that it changed oh. and they say it didn't change. When was the, so the book of Isaiah written? Jeremiah? Well, we have um, the Qum Qumran rolls, which prove that at least a hundred years. How many years this, after this the flood did Moses write about it? Oh, Tangelo, how many years after the flood did Moses write about it? I don't know exactly. 800 is the right answer, according to Tovia Singer. 800 years. That's a lot of long time I for the legends was, to develop. I think it was even more than that. If we check the um, Masoretic text and compare it to the Septuagint. Muslims have a book. More than that. And Christians have 66 to 73 books. That's the only difference. Okay. And the point is, I mean, as long as it's a non-zero or non-infinitesimal probability, as I said, you're still going to get an infinite expected value by multiplying it by infinity. So it's kind of irrelevant. And even if Islam was zero or infinitesimal, right? There's also, there's other religions which are not zero or not infinitesimal. And if you are assigning them zero or infinitesimal, I'm going to say that, you know, you're, you're just clearly um, reasoning in the wrong way, right? Because they have many of the same theistic proofs as the ones that purport to establish the truth of Christianity. And some of them have very similar um, evidential basis in the texts and things that they provide. And so, I mean, w what you said just isn't isn't relevant to the objection I've raised to using Pascal's wager in that way, right? Hey, uh, Tom Rabbit in the live stream chat said you were talking about the Shroud of Turin yesterday. Did you change your mind on it? No. Why should I? Give me a good reason and I change my mind. I don't and know what he's talking about, but... We... Yeah, my standard question about this is show me how it the image on the shroud was made and I will disbelieve that it is um, actually um, the burial cloth. I want to try the outsider Jesus. test for I've faith. Seen. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, that's fine. And, I, I, I mean, just wanted the answer. No, he, Ra Tom Rabbit, he hasn't changed his mind. That, that's all I wanted to hear. Um, okay. But um, so a Muslim 
it's written in a some type of Islamic book that Allah appeared to a to Muhammad on a road. No, sorry, the angel Gabriel in a cave. In a cave. No, right? no, no, no. I'm going to change it a bit. That Allah sent His angel Gabriel down to Earth and appeared to Muhammad on a road. I think it's called the Damascus Road. <laughs> And none of his friends could hear or see anything, but Muhammad saw a bright light and heard a voice through the angel Gabriel saying, I am Allah, the one God, not a trinity. Would you believe that claim if it's written in an old book? As I told you previously, Doc, the I don't yes or the no? My... no, I wouldn't believe. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Now, when the Apostle Paul is on a road to Damascus and he sees Jesus, do you believe that claim? Lean yes or lean no? Yes, I believe it. Why do you believe one and not the other? Because we have not only the Apostle Paul, but as I said previously, we have over 45 authors of the Bible, and they are all saying basically the same thing. Okay. They are talking about the same God. This is what boggles my mind, because what we have here is a claim that you do not believe in isolation. And here's another claim that you do not believe in isolation. But when you combine them, you also believe them. Right? Explain I'm that sorry, to me. Explain how, how you wouldn't believe any of these claims in isolation, but somehow when you shove them all together, then you believe it. As I said, Doc, my worldview is not constructed based on just one information, but it comes from many places and it is a construction yeah. but and this is the problem right is that most of these pieces of information are independent of one another and that on their own they're very very improbable right and so with them being independent of one another and improbable that's like lowering the probability massively for each so when you shove them together it shouldn't go up and even if they were dependent on one another it still goes down as you shove them together I completely disagree with you on that. Well, then you don't understand how probability works. Well, no, I disagree because I think each single point of evidence in regards of the origin of the natural world points to an intelligent creator. No, no, Otenzo, I'm giving you a God. You can have a God. Creator God exists. Christianity no, could still know, be false. Yes? Do, do you know why? Well, <laughs> the thing is, when I con uh, have conversations with atheists, I don't start usually with the Christian God. I start in a I cumulative know. argument with the question, does God exist or not? Okay, I'm giving and that to you for free. You don't even have to defend it. It's yours. Got it. I'm going to assume for the rest of this conversation, well, as I, as we're I all agreed you, that this God, creator God spiritual exists. Spiritual things, spiritual things need to be spiritually understood. When my Norwegian friend had this No, 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 stop talking, Elijah. Right, no, it's irrelevant. The Bible. It's he irrelevant. Didn't anything of that. It's irrelevant. He just knew that Christ is God, be based on that experience. I'm talking about you right now. God is for free. You get you you have him. Okay? Okay. Can mm -hmm. Christianity be false and then this God and God, a creator God, exist? Yes, it could be false. Oh, great. So Christianity could be false and there could be a God. Sure. Okay. Now let's look at what's the earliest evidence for Christianity. What do you think it is? For Christianity, not for Judaism, not for God in general. For Christianity, what's the earliest evidence we have? The Gospels. Like... No. False. Try again. The, the Apostle, Apostle Paul. Correct. The writings of Correct. Apostle ding, Paul. ding, ding. Yeah. You win 500 pine points. And what does the Apostle Paul tell us? What is the actual evidence well, he, he comes, presents? Well, he comes with the basic creed, right? Uh, yes, a creed. First Corinthians yeah. 15. Mm -hmm. In isolation, do you believe Christianity is true based on that creed? No, I would need more information. Right. So you do not believe that just because First Corinthians 15 says that Jesus appeared to 512 and finally to Paul, you don't believe it, do you? In isolation, I wouldn't believe. Okay, now let's add on. What's the next evidence we have for Christianity? Probably the Gospels. I okay, guess. which Gospel is the first one in your view? I think it is Mark, right? It is Mark, right. Well, most scholars yeah. say yes. Yeah. Okay, if all you had was Paul's letters and the Gospel of Mark, would you believe Christianity is true? 
it would raise my confidence. Would you believe it's true? I don't know, because that's not the way I came to believe. I know, you came to believe through an experience, right? I came to believe because I went... Go, I went so your answer is, I don't know if I would believe it based on Paul and Mark. Right, yeah. But you do know you wouldn't believe just based on Paul. Yeah, I think that just if I would have just that information that there was someone called Christ which rose from the dead, that alone per se, I wouldn't believe just that. Okay, what about Mark moves you to the fifty percent agnostic, let's say? Like why why even why does it even budge the needle for you? As I told you, I don't know where there would be a point which would pass the fifty percent and the, where I would say Okay, I believe it now, but there is another aspect, Doc, which is the spiritual aspect. How do you know and about the spiritual aspect? Like, why do I you even where where, I, I where did you even you hear about the spiritual aspect before? But I I think you cannot explain spiritual experiences and things because um, they are not. Um, why do you believe that the... naturally explained? The spiritual realm exists. We're talking about Christianity here. Remember, I gave you God. Doesn't have Christianity have to do with the spiritual? Yes, but you admitted so, you admitted so, that Christianity could be false, yet a God exists and spiritualness can exist. So yeah, I'm asking you, you. Ask me how I would detect that the Christianity is false. So you wouldn't believe based on Paul, and you're undecided with Mark, <clears throat> right? Okay, now let's give you, you let's give I you Matthew. You if someone, if someone that I don't know would simply present me a name and say that person told me that someone rose from the dead, I mean, I would need more information. What is this about, right? Okay, unless it was some guy from Norway. I mean, sorry. To okay, okay. So that. now, so now we, I'll give you. So keep all Paul's letters. Keep the Gospel of Mark. The next Gospel written was. Matthew, right? Yeah, I don't know in which sequence. It is Matthew. They, they you got to get start to know this stuff, Atangelo, if you're going to be an apologist. The next one is Matthew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, seriously. Thank it, you. If an atheist like me knows more about the chronological evidence, you got a problem on your hands. You should know this well, off the top you, of your head. Have, you, well, you have a good uh, Christian background, right? So you. So this is for this is to help you in the future. Paul's first, then the Gospel of Mark, then the Gospel of Matthew. Then, then Luke, Acts, and then finally the Gospel of John. And then the epistles are later in Revelations. Who knows? But Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciate you. Would you believe that Christianity is true based on Paul, Mark, and Matthew? Doug, honestly, I don't know how I can answer your question because I've not gone through this. That's not the way I came to believe. Okay. How did you come to believe? I had depression when I was a teenager and was looking for a solution. And I said, I'll try to pray and see if God helps me out of my depression. And I started to read the Bible. I didn't understand much of it. I came from a Catholic background. And then a colleague, he invited me to go to an evangelical church. There they explained me the gospel. And I said, well, um, okay, uh, very good. I got, I got it. You were depressed. You prayed to God. You went to an evangelical church. You started reading the Bible, correct? No, um, I, I started to read the Bible a few years before. Before going to the church. The first time uh, an evangelical church, okay. yes. Now, outside of Test for Faith, you know what I'm going to say. A Muslim's depressed. Raised in a Muslim culture, let's say, but not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Okay, depressed, desperate, cries out to Allah. Kind of like Hamza, right? From and his depression, his depression goes away. Then he starts reading the Quran. Then he starts going to um, what do they call them? Not temples, but um, mosques. Mosques. And then commits to being a a Muslim. Does that mean okay. Islam is true based on how... Would, would you say that that was a good way to say that Islam is true? On how that Muslim became a Muslim? 
maybe it isn't a good way, but that's how it worked with me. Okay, so you're admitting right here that the way you came to Christ was not a good way. I wouldn't say that, but for You me, just did! It isn't maybe a good way to say that's why I my religion or my faith is the most reasonable faith. I give you that, but I can tell you that based on what came afterwards. I'm a Christian for 37 years. So um, I think I know a little bit more today than I knew back then. And if I am still a Christian, there is a reason for that. Obviously, okay, okay, I okay, I got you. You're, you're saying that after your experience, the person, there's right? years and years and years of, of other experiences that have shown you that Christianity is true. Now let's apply it to the Muslim. Muslim depressed, uh, cried out to Allah, um, started reading the Quran, started going to mosque. And then a guy like me, he meets an atheist like me. So do you think that's a reliable way? Because I got this Christian friend named Otangelis. And he says he, that's the same way he, he came to Christianity. And he goes, well, no, Christianity is false. Well, okay, maybe you're right, Doug. Maybe the way I, I came to Islam is not a reliable way. But I got 37 years of experiencing okay, so, the Muslim faith. Okay, so in the end, Doug, I am wrong. So what? <laughs> so what? Well, now, now you should sort of reevaluate your beliefs somewhat shouldn't you now you should accept a 20 dollars okay. gift card to applebee's from the wichita okay, home so office I, so so <laughs> i am open now to listen your story nathan and your yours uh, doc um why is it reasonable wait a minute have you just given up that easily Have, have you That's given what you have to offer now i mean don't you do that all the time you say well i give you god you know, you obviously you don't believe in God, but you say just for sake of a yeah. conversation, I give you God. So I say the same thing. Okay, I give you that God doesn't. Exist. So you want so uh, you want Nathan and I to help you with a replacement now for Christianity? Yes. Okay. What what do you need? Well, how can we help you? What what sorts I of need, things in the world do you do you need in order to go on? I need I need a good explanation of our existence, which doesn't require a creator. Well, no, you want a creator, though, right? No, no, I just want an explanation of how we can exist record. without a creator. Okay, it just is. Existence just is. It's ne it's necessary. There's your explanation. Is that something that you ha that has convinced you? Is based on that argument that you have become an unbeliever? Uh, that that for me, it, it depends. When you say an explanation of our existence, there's a few things you could mean, right? But if you're talking about in the broadest sense possible, like yes. why does the universe exist? Yes, yes. That that's has genuinely that has genuinely that... convinced me that theism is false. I think that that's a better explanation. Okay, so how the, is it the better explanation, explanation Nathan? Um, because it contains less commitments than the theistic commitments. So, firstly, a, a necessary. Well, you're shaking your head, but what? I mean, apparently you don't well, know. What forget, we're forget. Yeah, forget God. It's about you, well, your explanation now. How we can exist yes. without. God, or just how does natural, um, how do natural mechanisms explain our existence? That's the question. So what we're engaging in is explanation by postulation, right? And so what we do is we postulate explanations, just like the theist does when they um, explain contingency by postulating God. I postulate a different entity, right? Namely, a necessary initial physical state. And I'm saying that that entity is a better explanation. And so that's why I go with that one rather than going with God. Okay, so how is that a better explanation? Because it, it's made of the same kind of stuff, right? It's not a, it's not a new kind of thing. Um, it doesn't have as many weird metaphysical commitments like divine simplicity, which I don't understand. Agent causation, so it's spatio-temporal causation, like this sort of causation, it's not... Um, you know, an entirely new kind of thing where something is created out of nothing, right? Um, so that's, it doesn't involve tons of bruteness from free will. So things are the way they are, right? Because- Hang on, hang on, Nathan. What you just said is so incredibly important. I want to make sure Otangel got it. The reason why it's a better explanation for God just being God is because right now you believe in, let's say, two categories of existence, physical and spiritual. Am I right? Yes. Right now, I just believe in one. 
So basically what you're doing, Nathan, you try to explain the existence of nature with nature. Do you see the problem? Now you explain the well, nature of God no. through God. You see the problem? There's no problem because my God was not, wasn't created. He is eternal. There's no problem. The, uni the universe was not created. There's no problem. There is a problem. There is a problem with your, what, your what's God. What's the problem? Yes. The problem is... The problem? is the, pr the problem is Big Bang, second law of thermodynamics. And well, the Big Bang you cannot still have exists eternal... in this model. Second law, it's not eternal. It's finite, okay. past finite. Yeah, we, we, we are going so out in all you, the... All you just the... don't understand what the model is, right? Because you're, you're telling me things like that, for example, it began to exist, right? Or you're telling me that it's past eternal. And those just aren't things that I believe, right? So mm. if you actually care about understanding the position, then maybe don't just like tell me things which aren't actually things that can lead to. But we don't even have to go okay. into that. Because, uh, Atanja, you asked a good question. Uh, why is your explanation better? And I think it's very simple. You have two categories of existence. We have one, Occam's razor. We can explain. No, I know Occam's necessity razor, is. Right. I, I know necessity Occam's is a razor horrible explanation. Only, what? It only works. Uh, parsimonious explanations only work if they are possible. You have not demonstrated are, that. Have, have, have you demonstrated that that it's impossible? for naturalism yes, to be I true? Was going to, I was going to, to tell you that, but um, I was interrupted. But I'm more curious now about um, what, what, what your view is. What if I was just to say it's impossible for God to exist? Then. What if I was just to claim that it's impossible for God to exist? What would you say? Well, then I tell you this. It is only impossible if it is logically inconsistent. And if I am telling you God is... What if I told you it's powerful, logically inconsistent for God to exist? You're God. I, well, I think it's metaphysically impossible, right? And that's just a different type of possibility. So Because this um, God hates sin, yet creates logic. knowing with 100% certainty that sin will result. Logically impossible. Done. It is only logically impossible if there is any kind of logical contradiction in the description of that deity. God does not want okay, any what's... sin, but creates a world with sin, knowing with 100% certainty would happen. Logical contradiction. No. Yes. How How is it that he cannot create a world where sin can come into existence? Because he does not There's want no sin. Logical... Not want, want. It's like he would not, yeah. It's not that he could not, it's that he would not. So if God existed, he wouldn't create a world that was... You impossible. can't get more of a contradiction not... than want and not want. Okay, but that's not the God that I propose with basic aspects. Oh, so you believe that God did want sin? No, I am not even coming into that discussion right now. I am just saying no, that... You're I talking about logical inconsistency. I'm giving you one. Well, of course you... Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. If you think that is a problem, then we You don't think it's a problem? This? No, let's just remove that and say the God that we are putting on the table is powerful, eternal, and intelligent, conscious. That's it. Is it logical inconsistent, that description? I think not. So that's not the God you believe God in. can possibly exist. Yes, God has these characteristics. He's What's also metaphysically impossible, given mine and Doug's conscious. commitment right to the initial necessary physical state. Well, th there was no... F I mean, first you need to, to explain to me how a physical state can be eternal without the beginning you have well, to explain to me eternal. how a spiritual state can be eternal it's finite okay so if it's finite did it come from nothing no it didn't come from anything that's it's just the first point in space that's time. so so has nothing causal powers no? yeah it has causal powers yeah causal powers to produce everything in the universe yes but has nothing causal powers no it's not nothing it's a physical state. Yes, but where did this physical state come from? It didn't come from anywhere. Just think of God okay, when, so when you ask when you so ask can Nathan you describe that a, physical a tangible, state. When you ask Nathan these questions, of? Nathan, uh, tangible, when you ask Nathan these questions, just pretend you're you're asking yourself these questions and imagine how uh, you would answer it applied to God. And we can do the same thing with the universe. Well, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've not thought about these issues, Doug? So when you, you ask, when you ask, did the universe come from nothing? And and uh, Nathan answers, no, it just is. That's the same answer you would give for your God, right? I mean, somewhere it has to end. And the we're not adding is, a new category of existence. Uh, we're not adding a new category of existence. 
Well, there is so an we're axiom more, we're which more we parsimonious cannot than espouse. you. And well, if you if you think it is fine with me, that's that's what okay, you fine. believe, and I respect you. You know, you problem. respect you respect uh, our views, naturalism. My view, at least. I've always respected the views of other people, right? Even if it means we go to hell. I mean, I I don't respect um, views which I think are like patently wrong, right? And that's not to say that I think all theists are patently wrong. No, I am wrong. talking about people. I mean, people they are free to believe whatever they they want, and there are. But you so seemed upset. Someone. You seemed you can, upset. You can respect someone while disrespecting their ideas, right? Like I, I, I would think that I wouldn't like to disrespect people. Maybe I do sometimes, right? But I think that people believe like silly things, and they should be ridiculed and mocked, and that they're irrational for believing them, and that's really bad. No, but uh, uh, hang on, Nathan. Like well, Otangelo, you, earlier mean... you said that you complain that you talk to someone who assigned responsibility to me for leaving Christianity. Why didn't you just say that? Well, live and let live. Like I respect your what you know. You wanted to become an atheist. Why? But you were you seemed upset to me. I am upset about the situation, but that's just me. That's what I think. But I mean, that's that's. Why uh, couldn't you just say what you said to us just now and say, to that person? Say, oh, okay, you left Christianity because of that. Okay, that's fine. Live and let live. But all I can do. I, and what I do is just exposing what I believe and why and what others do. That's up to them. I cannot do more than that. And I can pray that and hope that people can come to Christ as I came. Until the day you can light up my water soap nap napkin or raise the dead, you have nothing. <laughs> you have nothing. Well, I, hope, dead well, 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 I, ho I hope to be able to convince you, Doc, that your epistemological um, burden. My bar is too high. Is, is, is no, it is silly. I should lower it to, like the William Lane Craig. My bar is low. It's not that it's, it's, not that it's too high. I think it's arguments. silly. Until you provide good arguments, I won't believe. So. And if you provide good arguments for your physical state, which is eternal, I don't, I'm not convinced okay. that this is a Say it to Tangelo. Yeah, I mean, I sort of think I have, but that I, I mean, I would have said this if he was here anyway, but it's not very, I sort of just don't think he kind of can understand, um, and it's not a problem with what I'm saying, but there we go. <laughs> All boils down to these experiences. I was depressed, I was desperate, I cried <laughs> out to God, he heard my voice, now I'm not depressed. You hear yeah. stories like this in every religion that he would deem false. It's sort of weird in light of him saying that right, that then he still thinks he has arguments that people should change their minds because of, you know, like you, you think that as a result of that, he'd just give up with the arguments and just say, so yeah, you know, if you're going to believe, then maybe you'll do the same thing. Maybe you won't, but I'm not going to press the point. But instead then he, he sort of forgets that he said all that and then just comes out with all of these arguments. Like, so ever, anyone who's rational, you know, you can't get something from nothing, um, which is what atheists believe and a book can't write itself. And it or you know, Give it. Room's open. I, I'm not going to go four hours like last time. So if you feel the, the nudging of the Holy Spirit, you better act fast. Limited time. Offer only. What do you think about my idea of paying apologists to come on? At some point, they have to accept the money, right? At some point, maybe. No, Brandon. I don't know. Brandon wants in. No, Brandon, go away. Maybe some wouldn't out of principle, like, uh, of just really disliking you, you know, who you have a history with. But I think some would. And there's a lot of grifters out there who are apologists as well. So, I mean, they would. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if you, like, if you dropped 10K on William Lane Craig or something, if, if he would. Like... Oh, 10K, he... He would be immoral not to accept that to come on my show. <laughs> Look at the good he could do with that. But I wouldn't pay. Like, he's not worth 10K to me. <laughs> like, seriously, um, after, after hearing that you, that you heard that video I made today, right, with him, where he basically admits I uh, lowered the bar because I needed. with Titanic. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like after hearing that, like I'd say he's worth maybe a hundred bucks, not ten k. Yeah, he said this. This is so valuable that my evidential standard, it, it, the evidence could be a million times worse than it is. Something. I mean, that's just that's so ridiculous. 
Jeff that's, is... not, that's not really how you evaluate things, right? Like, if this is true, it's so good that I'm going to just lower, you know, what's required to believe in it. But... Do you know who Japheth is? Uh, no. I don't he has a thick so. Asian Maybe. accent and he talks really fast, so he's not hard to understand. But I will let him in for uh, two minutes. Let's see. Okay. Hi. So oh, yeah, I do know Jeff. Mm -hmm. I've seen him a few times. Jeff, uh, do you know what, what a Texas drawl is? What does that mean? It's a do you know a Texas accent? Do, uh, yeah. Can Just you? Double yeah, because you talk very fast, and I've had complaints about you from the oh, home office in Wichita that you speak too fast, and because of your accent, they can't understand you. So what I want you to do now is talk with a southern drawl for the rest of this live stream. Can you do that for me? I'll talk slower. <laughs> what did you want to say? So two topics. So I see if I am agnostic, right? I see be, there's only two possibilities, whether the first cause is an intelligence or not intelligence. So I, I, I don't think, so it's 50-50. Somebody who is agnostic should see it as 50-50. I'm agnostic and I disagree with that. Why? Um, because I think my credence that um, the that reality is exhausted by physical things, and that the first uh, and that minds are late and local to reality is like really high, probably about eighty or ninety percent. Um, but when it comes to whether or not God exists, right? Um, I'm agnostic as to that, so I withhold assent about that. So if, if the first cause is in, intelligent, you you have God already, and uh, for atheists, the first cause is not is not intelligent so from non-intelligence somehow become intelligence right and um, yeah yeah that like i said minds are late and local on my view so they they there's something that um is produced by reality later down the line not at the it's not there from the start this is not the main topic i'm on uh, because i have a second topic the how about time do, do you see it's 50 50. no 99.9999 to 0.001 because of this because exactly what we were talking with uh, Atangela about you, you have to postulate a new category of existence the spiritual realm or something that we have no evidence for but yet we have ample evidence of the natural world you, you've uh, got to keep in mind that God's mind isn't like our mind right so I can't cause things to exist um, with my mind in the sense that I can bring them into existence without any material cause. Whereas God's mind is the type of thing, like, like you can't, you sort of can't smuggle God's mind in off of the back of our minds because it's, it's such a different type of mind that it's a new kind of thing entirely, right? So even if there were considerations that meant that you couldn't get mind from earlier physical stuff, at best you'd have some kind of, you know, like, pantheism right or pa pantheism where it was like well our mind is like a disassociated version of some source consciousness but you wouldn't get this kind of like theistic mind that can produce things okay so the the traditional sense of spiritual things i disagree because even in the hebrew and in the greek the word spirit is another word for breath so i see spirit as something like a molecule it it it, it, it really exists but it's, it's just a small form of molecule that can go through solid so that do you believe god solid um you're gonna be a mormon now I, I, no i i believe in some sort of digital physics theory so oh. the no 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 don't uh, no 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 this reminds me of yvonne who called in earlier okay anyway the the topic I want to talk about is the atonement theory. Yeah, so that's more I, interesting. So I've shifted the, my view on the atonement. And I, I did not believe that Jesus died to pay for sin. He, Jesus died to show, to reveal our sin. How, and how and was that the, accomplished? And the the Old Testament, the, the slaying of the, of the cows, the lamb, the whole point is the destruction of idols because people in in those times they value animals a lot something uh, those people feel them as very precious so you need to to prove to god that you have no idols by 
slaying and burning them. Okay, yeah, these are humans who had superstitious beliefs, and they thought that if they offered something of value to these gods, that God would give them rain when they wanted to grow crops, or give them victory when they wanted to invade another land. Very superstitious. It's not the burning, it's not the burning sacrifice. Uh, the, so the, the whole point is to have no idols. You have to prove that you have no idols before God. That is an explanation, or mine is an explanation. That humans were superstitious. They had these beliefs that if they offered sacrifices to their gods, that they would be victorious. You, you could even say that, um, you know, on Doug's explanation, right? The idea that whatever's most valuable to you is something that you have to make a public display of sacrificing to gods um, is actually a way of kind of maintaining um, sort of in-group loyalty, right? In a culture where it's very important to have cohesive communities, um, but because people are like going to war a lot and things like that, and you know, fighting with other communities and things like that. Um, it's very important to have tight in-group loyalty. And so by kind of making a public commitment of doing something like, you know, like that, that's just to say there's natural explanations, right, which can make sense of that theology still without making reference to God. So the Isaiah 53, 11, that by the knowledge of the servant, he would justify many, right? So it's about public display of the slaying of an idol. So I don't know how to study. I, I no longer believe in the Trinity. So I'm just saying. So, what? When did this I, change? So I was uh, watching some... The past week? Actually, past was, month? It, what, one month. So I, I, even when I believe in the Trinity, it's about 55%. And I, I was watching some Jews apologetics, right? And I think they found flaw. You're becoming a Jew. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm still a Christian. No, so you're not. The... You're becoming a Jew. So For a I, moment. Another, <laughs> I found a theory to... to, to, to an, opus, to an open theist Judaic to, 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 to Mormon. The to, to fix the flaw. I, I, to, 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 to fix the flaw. Okay, yeah. Japheth. I'm proud of you, actually, that you changed your mind on that. You went from Trinitarian to Unitarian. Uh, correct. Yeah. Good for you. But I got another call. <laughs> Fair enough for changing his mind. But yeah. Alejandro. Oh, you kicked him out? Uh, I wanted to ask him questions about atonement. Um... Yeah, I kicked him out. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh... I only came in because I wanted to ask questions about atonement with him. Ask me. Uh, how does it work? Like, how do you get from A to B? Like, he gets tortured to death, and then sins are forgiven. But, like, what's the mechanism? Oh, yeah. No, that question no Christian can answer. Just, yeah, I've been looking for an answer. Just God does it somehow. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. I, I love the idea of you being, like, a theology professor or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh Devin is a new new guy. Hi Devin. Uh you're muted. Yeah, he's going to catch up soon. What kind of car is he in? Looks like a van to me with the uh Oh, he's uh I bet you he works for UPS or something. We're talking about you Devin. <laughs> He's indicating, and then you just get these these uh, still shots. Yeah, yeah, speak loud and clearly. Hello, hello, hello. You might want to turn the video off if it's not going to cause you to crash. Just to. And Joshua, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, congratulations. On uh, did you see that he lost sixty pounds? Hello. Donated. We can hear you, Devin. We can hear you, Devin. Oh, you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm not a UPS driver. This is my uh, my dad sells used cars uh, for a living, and I'm just transporting one of his one of his vans for him. Oh, you're so, William Lane Craig's son. Um, it's a bit. What's that? You're William Lane Craig's kid. 
A ba another bad oh, joke. Okay. <laughs> Really Devin, so Devin, hard listen hard to, to me. Sign. Your audio is horrible. There is at least a five second delay. So say what you want to say and then leave. All right. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to hop on my phone because this is my iPad and it's not working very well. I, I love how like ruthless you are with it. If it was my channel, there'd be an hour of this kind of like jilted conversation where it was yeah, like, "No, life's too short to even try." <laughs> get your crap together, and if you don't get together, like no hard feelings on Devin, but no, I'm not going to put up with that. Rooms open for theists who know how to use the internet. <laughs> how many theists do you have watching now? Do you think? Uh, let's do a poll. I got 420. Oh, he lost 60 pounds in weight. I didn't see that. Yeah, he's doing well. Nice. Okay. Um, are you a theist? Can't hear you, Devin. Can you hear him? No. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now we can hear you. All right. Um, so I grew up. Cool. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm driving in the middle of the middle of Nevada, so this is, might be a little choppy. Um, I grew up Mormon, and uh, full blown Mormon, Mormon family, big family. Went on a mission, left the church in the middle of my mission in Germany. I was in Switzerland in Germany, um, and since being back, I've been really interested in the. Oh no. <laughs> the e e e e e e yeah he's gone how many pounds did, have uh, you how many kilos have you lost uh so i'm 84 at the minute so since we started that makes it what 20 25 something like that which is almost 25 know, kilos about... yeah yeah oh yeah so you've lost 55 pounds and i've lost 30. so joshua nathan and i combined still have lost more than you <laughs> no i do not see you knocking oflamio yeah this time last year i was 114 kilograms and now i'm 84 kilograms wow and you're you're my height right 510 yeah yeah what percent body fat were you, do you think? Uh, probably about 30 or something, I'm guessing. Oh, you were fat. Pretty fat. I mean, I, I've got quite a lot of uh, muscle mass as well, so I carry it pretty well. Like, um, you know, kind of like a, a powerlifting type build or something. But yeah, but yeah, like my, I was getting a bit of a belly and stuff. Definitely. Okay, we got uh, 423 people watching, uh, over 10% of you are theists. That's according to my math, uh, close to 50 people are theists. There's 50 theists in here watching at least. Some of you are lurkers and don't even know how to press buttons on polls. So um, at least some of you have the prompting of the Holy Spirit to call in or whatever spirit you believe in. I wonder how accurate that is. 10% theists watching. I think it's low. I think it's fairly high for an atheist channel. I don't know, maybe that's wrong though. Maybe people hate watch more than I like to think. I gotta say something controversial to, to needle them to come on. Like, I know Jesus did not rise from the dead. I know it. How do I know? Come on in, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it is interesting though how Atangelo just doesn't really have any good responses to the various um, problems phase view that you and I raised. So you know, like the flying man, as you walk, walk through it with him, you know, he accepts everything that you said. He accepts he shouldn't believe on that basis, right? And then. He's just like, yeah, now I'm just not going to do anything about it. It's so frustrating, you know, because it takes an hour to get there because he's so 
yeah. um, sort of dishonest and disingenuous or, so, you know, so, so kind of we're grasping at anything. And then you eventually, you eventually block off every single avenue that he's got and get him there. And then he's like, yeah, okay, and maybe I'm irrational. So what? Now, <laughs> what are you going to do? Random question for either of you. Do you think the argument or concept behind Russell's teapot is good or not? Nah? Uh, you mean uh, that you can't disprove a teapot and other dark side of the moon, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think if you, that's your, if you're going to believe anything until it's proven false, including the teacup, then that's bad. I mean, is that what he means by yeah, I, the teacup? Yeah, he he's just saying, yeah, like that, you know, God's kind of like, um, the idea of having to have arguments against God's existence is like the kind of idea of having to have an argument against a teapot orbiting between um, Earth and Mars, right? In the sense that there just aren't any good reasons to believe that there's such a teacup. Um, and so it's not that you have to have an argument against it. It's just that, um, you know, that if there aren't good reasons to believe something like that, you probably shouldn't. And it's the same with uh, with God. Okay, I'm going to give you so six. First... I'm going to give you 60 seconds, Oflamio, unless you make me really happy. So first things first is Ape is a clone of you, Pine Creek, because you look almost exactly the same. You even have the same glasses. I don't even know who Ape is. I think he's meant, Ape, meant Oh, uh, you. It's because I've got. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Nathan is much better looking than me. More spots as well. Uh, I can't be a priest, as Doug has pointed out before. <laughs> okay. So I, I want. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I want. Ape is to convince me why I shouldn't believe in fictional deities. I mean, I can see them on the computer, I can see them on TV. Why shouldn't I believe in those? Well, well, when you say believe in fictional deities, right? If you believe that they're fictional, then I, I've got no problem. Um... Okay, he doesn't have an argument. Okay, that's fine. Well, does it make you happy yeah. or sad? I'm neutral. I, I thought he just put up a, a better fight. So, well, I guess he's agnostic, but I'm also agnostic. I, I don't. Uh, I'm not convinced God doesn't exist yet. Uh, if um, if these deities that you believe in want you to give ten percent of your income, and they're not real and they don't exist, and they go to bad things like not helping people, but just a, uh, I don't know, the priests of this deity. Yeah, there's a good reason not to believe in them, right? Well, that's a, that's kind of the point. The priests work for the uh, deity; they work on behalf because the guests can't don't have a tangible existence in the world. I right, but if I sold you a magic potion that's in this bottle and it, it does absolutely nothing for you, and I say I want twenty bucks and you give it to me, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, you know, it's good for you because you made some money. But it's bad for you because you lost the money and it doesn't give you anything in return. Correct. Well, I get a potion. Maybe I can resell it. But so do yeah, So does definitely. believing in these false deities, these fictional deities, give you anything in return? Is the question. Well, maybe they can help me sell um, vitamin water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you could be right. There's a lot of uh, people who believe in deities that help them sell things. Yes. Like t-shirts, like, by the way, Christianity is true. Like like those mega churches that have millions of dollars going through them. Yeah. Or hats. People could sell hats. But at least they're selling peace and some community. So they're not, you know, it's not totally bunk. Right? These mega yeah, church, the churches. One, yeah, the ones that are selling peace. You have the Muslim mega churches selling war. Ooh. Are you saying all Muslims are, are, are war people? I'm not saying all of them. It's just there's there's enough of them that stuff you do some building sometimes. You could say the same thing about Christians. They're just selling war. Yeah. 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 Fact, Especially it, the Christian I mean, nationalists. The Christians mm -hmm. probably take out more buildings than Muslims if we, if we count Yeah, them. yeah. Even Obama. Like, look at George W. Bush. He said Gog and Magog. He prayed and uh, Iraq is like it's prophecy from the Old Testament. Wasn't there a thing about M4 carbines having like a cross printed and stamped into the uh, serial next to the serial number as well? Or have I just remembered something random from when it was like 2003? Uh, I don't remember that. But anyhow, anything else you want to say as you're leaving? Not right now. <laughs> okay, take care.
How do we make money on the Pine Creek channel by, by viewers? Volume. We just cycle through them. There was, it looked like there was a guy named Mohammed who wants on. Mohammed, you click on the link on the top of the live stream chat. Couldn't be more simple. Mohammed Hijab, the um, scariest Islamic apologist because of his sharp intellect. Is that the guy who wants on? I don't know. I don't know if it's Mohammed Hijab. I mean, they're all called Mohammed. Huh? I would love for a sharp Muslim to come in and humble us. I mean, usually Elias does. He's probably been killed now by Imus. Ah, here he is. Speak of the, I almost said speak of the devil, but I don't think a Muslim would like that. Hello, Muhammad. Hi, Doug. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. You look happy. Uh, I am happy. I'm proud to be happy always. Tell me, Muhammad, what's giving you this joy I seek and thirst for? <laughs> I, I really love your stuff. It's because of obviously for obvious reasons. <laughs> you... For Christianity bashing, but I guess uh, I've seen recent your uh, uh, more recent of your work where you're bashing Islam also. So I'm an equal opportunity basher. <laughs> but I was offended by the previous gentleman saying all Muslims or a lot of them are whatever they are. You know, I'm yeah. sorry, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. There's uh what percentage of Muslims um do you think are warmongers? Um I have not seen any statistics, but if I remember hearing from, you know, like um researchers or you know, journalists who are Muslims, they would say less than one percent around the world are warmongers. And uh but I've of course, you know, uh like in in the bible in the quran also there are some verses which people would take it the wrong way and then go on on their <laughs> killing spree and you know making chaos so i would understand that but of course you know the magic word context comes in here comes in here <laughs> yeah i agree but uh, i believe islam is 100 percent false uh of course you do believe that but uh, I, I did not see your conversation because it's like your videos are really long and it's difficult. For me I got timestamps. So all you have to do is like read the timestamps at the bottom and you can go oh, to what interests you. Yeah, me. you're right. Yeah. There's a good one from when Doug went into um, Iyak Dawar like a year or two ago, which is about an hour long conversation with Hamza. Um, yeah, and, I saw uh, that. Sabor. I saw some of that. And of course, they are much more worse in uh, talking to Doug and, uh, than me. But all I want to say is that um, uh, Islam, Islam's belief in uh, in itself is like there's a lot of things in Islam which are very different from Christianity. Uh, uh, you know, why we think Islam is true is, I mean, of course, there are so many questions that atheists have which are very difficult to answer. Uh, first of all, is proving that God exists. There's no way that physically you could ever prove that God exists because that's uh that you know the believers believe that that's the real charm of uh this world that uh god is testing us um by being in this world and not showing us to him and then letting the humans decide what they want to do i mean um that's the topic of free will then uh like they have the option of to do to do what they want in this world so so are you saying that god makes the uh, makes it so as the evidence for his existence isn't good enough so you have to choose um just based off of some 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 other reason right than the evidence is that what so uh, if so so the physical evidence uh for sure there is not only good enough it's not even there because if god were to reveal himself right now then everybody would believe in him but uh because he's unseen and he has shown his signs around the world around the universe we believe the creation is a sign of him. Well, wait a minute. That, you uh, you believe Satan's real, right? Uh, yes, we do. Didn't Satan uh, coincide with Allah in heaven? Uh, we no. He he. So he was. We believe that Satan was a good worshipper of God, but then he right. He uh, he. You know he. But uh, he saw he saw God. Allah, right? 
Uh, I'm. We're not aware if he did see, but he did worship with the angels, uh, who were worshiping, uh, who were worshiping Allah. Okay. But, uh, we're not. Because sure I was just going to say, if if Satan communed with Allah in some way, he still had the free will to go a, a different way. So why couldn't that be the that's, case? Why couldn't that be the case for us? That's the beauty that God allowed him to go his way, but then. Eventually, there is a judgment day where everybody who's not going with God, you know, what, what God is expecting, then they will end up in the wrong Okay, the wrong can, side. I, can I ask you just some very straightforward questions? Like, why do you believe Islam is true? What was the first thing that pops in your head? So, first thing, it'll be Quran, the miraculous book. Okay, why do you think the Quran is miraculous? Because it's a, a book which has, uh, first of all, it's not like Bible. It has no contradiction. It has no versions. It's only one book which has been there for 1400 years. And uh, there is a sign, like, uh, I'm sure you would have heard about this, but there's text in- Okay, hang on, hang, hang on a second. Like you're, uh, you're going through a list, but can a book have zero contradictions and have nothing to do with a God? Uh, yes, certainly. Okay. So just but the fact that a book has no contradiction doesn't mean it has anything to do with a God. So. Can we put take that off the list of the Quran having no contradictions? No, 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 no because that, that book which I'm referring to is talking about God. Can a book talk about God, have zero contradictions, and still not be from a God? Uh, not possible. Not possible. So, yeah, I, human... so I could not write a book with three pages talking about oh. a fictional deity yeah. and have... And have it checked by uh, a thousand different people. Make sure there's zero contradictions. I can yes, do that. No, yes. No, for sure. Yeah, of course. If okay. About three pages book. Yeah, that's right. That's so it is one. possible for people can to write a book. Three hundred. It is possible for a, for a group of people or one person to write a book about a god, have zero contradictions, and still have nothing to do with God. Actually, you know, it's his words. A person, a person. So here's here's what the thesis. Here's what the thesis of a Muslim is. A per, so if you look at Quran, Quran has more than 6,000 verses. And it they were narrated by a person. Oh, I'm talking about Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon your him. mic's a little... Ch uh, change your mic because it just got uh, fuzzy or crackly. I'm on my phone. Uh, if I come closer, is that better? Uh, no, I'm not sure Hello? what happened. But have you got like um, a cable or something that's loosely plugged in? No, no, no. I'm I'm on I'm on my phone directly. Hello. Uh, yeah, I, we can we can hear you. But we got we got to keep your answers really short because your audio is bad. But uh, okay. what's an what's another reason that you believe the Quran that Islam is true? You said the miracle of the Quran, but and then you said contradictions. But I think we are agreed that contradictions. So what? What's so the, yeah, I I want to just elaborate on that part because we. Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. He did not read. He did not write. He did not know how to write. And uh, suddenly he is speaking words which were summed up to be in a book, which is Quran, which is um, uh, 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 one reason is that, like I said, there's no, there's no uh, contradiction in the Quran and there hasn't been any change since it was written. Okay, okay hang on. Hang on one second. Can a person say, can it be written in a book that a man is illiterate and he's not illiterate? Why would a book lie? Are there books in the world where people lie? For sure. Okay. So is it, could the Quran lie? No. Why not? Because that's the reason we're saying that it's coming from God because of its miracles. Could a Quran, could a book lie about coming from God? For sure. Can the Quran lie about coming from God? Uh, no, because that's a reason. Because we're saying that it has it is a miraculous book which was narrated by a person who was not literate, and it has been the same since it started, and it has it was compiled during his lifetime, has been the same, uh, and there is no different versions of the Quran. And then also, okay, but a, Muhammad, I I don't think you're getting what I'm saying here. I can present you books that have not changed over centuries. That if you look at the first copy can, and look at the last copy, can never, can never present me a book which has not changed over centuries. Prove me, show me that book. Harry Potter. Oh, well, over centuries. Okay, uh, I can think of a book. We all we have to do is name a book after the invention of the printing press. 
Oh, of course, printing press. That's different. I'm not talking about printing press. Okay. So this is, I, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Sorry. Are you saying that the earliest manuscripts that we have um, are, are exactly what Muhammad dictated? I mean, exactly. But isn't that disputed amongst Quranic scholars? Well, no, who no, no. Who the, aren't the, Muslims? Word, the words, words, words wise, Quran is proof. It's clean. There's because no we don't have the earliest copies right, how would you know if there were changes? So uh, there is the earliest copy, which is carbon dated back to the time of Prophet Muhammad. There's one in the University of Birmingham. And then the, uh, uh, 50 years later, there's another, like, there's another book which is carbon dated to about 50 years later, which was when the Quran was compiled in a book form or uh, compiled together, not a book form because there was no pages, but it was, it was compiled together. That, yeah. that hang, hang on, Muhammad. Lift up your phone and sh go like this. Shake it. No, seriously, because you're, yeah, now to talk. Hello? <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's not helping. Still bad? Yeah, it's still bad. But, Mohammed, are there people on the planet who say that there are different versions of the Quran? Yes or no? Of course, who are Christians who would say that. Like, there's people who don't like Okay, hang on. Why do some people on the planet say there's different versions of the Quran? They're lying. They're lying. Lying. Like I can guarantee you, take my name, take my picture, and then say this person claimed that the people were lying, and put put it there, please. Okay, so do you think they have any evidence? Like, could they present a, two books of the Quran that are different? No, words wise, they cannot present a two a two books. I can I can guarantee that. Can, now, okay, but hang on, books. hang on. Can can someone? Uh, take parts of the Quran and tear some verses out and repackage it as the Quran, wouldn't that be a different version of the Quran? Yeah, so people have attempted that, but then, you know, there's uh, there's a hierarchy, like, you know, there's, we have, uh, uh, you know, there's institutions where Quran is printed from, and they are certified institutions, and uh, that Quran, okay. which... I know, but you know what you're doing now, though? You're saying that any... There are different versions of the Quran, but the version that's different is not the real, true Quran. It's a corrupted Quran by liars. Uh, there might be some, but I'm not, I'm not aware of. Any because I, I have a, I have a Quran right here. If I were to pull out one page and rip it out, and then sell it to my friend and say, "This is the true, unchanging Quran. Every mm -hmm. word is like the original," but that's not true. I ripped a page out. That's right. Right? But then you would say to me, oh, but Doug, this is not the true Quran anymore because you ripped, you, you ripped a page out. No, I, I, I don't mean by, by, you know, of course, you know, somebody could do that, but there is uh, institutions which print and there are scholars who, are, who have memorized the Quran word by word, who know by heart. And so if there is any, and this memorization, by the way, has started from the time when the Quran was compiled during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, until now. And a 10-year-old, like that's another thing about the Quran, a miracle. A 10-year-old can memorize the Quran, which is more than 6,000 verses. There is no other book on the shape of the earth ever to have existed where a book which is more than 6,000 verses has been memorized by a... Child if if uh, if someone memorized a book that had six thousand and one words, would you leave Islam? I will. Show me, please. You will leave Islam if someone memorizes a book with six thousand and one words. Yeah, I'm telling you because I know it's, it can't happen. There will be mistakes. How many pages is six thousand words? Six thousand verses, not words. Verses is so. Oh, uh, you said verses, not words. Yeah, verses, 6,000 verses, not words. Okay. Huh. And a 10-year-old ten, ten Muslim kid will, will narrate to you if you know Arabic or find someone who knows Arabic who's not Muslim and then have them read the Quran. How long does it take to narrate 6,000 verses by a 10-year-old? How long does that take? One day. One full day. So a 10-year-old spends 24 hours without sleeping? Not 24 hours. Not, not even 24 hours. We have institutions where kids they start from the morning like we have a morning prayer so it starts like let's say seven o'clock or six o'clock 
and then ends at six o'clock or five o'clock and they're they're done narrating the whole quran in one second have you ever seen a kid make one tiny mistake no you've never uh, of course no kids make mistakes but then there's kids who do it like exactly word for word okay so some kids do make mistakes but then they have to repeat because they make mistakes. So the teachers make them go back. And then there's those same kids who make mistakes. Okay, so a kid them. recites the Quran word for word, makes a mistake, and then they have to go back and do it again, make a mistake. Then they go back and do it again, and they get it right. And you're saying that's a miracle? Yeah. No, like the, uh, the fact that a 10-year-old narrates a full book for more than 6, 000, of more than 6,000 verses uh, error-free, that's a miracle, man. Well, it's, 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 it wasn't error-free. They made errors, and they had to go back to the beginning and start again. Yeah, that was because of memorization. Of course, memorization takes time. It won't be like one Right, second. yeah. It no. takes work. But that's not a miracle. Though, that's right? not a miracle. That's a procedure. That's a yes. procedure for training someone to correctly espouse Yeah, so prove, prove to me any other book which, ha which is of this length, which has been done like this. Prove to me. Okay. Well, that, so that's what the I actually like this, Nathan. Right? Yeah, Nathan, I actually like this because... Uh, challenge, all, challenge. all you have to it's very concrete it takes a lot of work but it's very concrete now really imagine i brought in my daughter in here right now and for the next 10 hours she recites something that's longer than the quran word for word and she makes no mistakes you're telling me with a straight face you will leave islam today show me <laughs> no no imagine that happens you're telling me you would leave islam because I know it's a challenge, it cannot be done. No, so but if it happen. actually happened, imagine it. Imagine my daughter coming in for the next 10 hours. She says, okay, uh, look, find this book on the internet. It's all in text, and I'm going to recite it. It's longer than the Quran. And imagine she actually does it. You're telling me you would leave Islam instantaneously. Doug, listen, I know for a fact, 102% this won't happen. So that's why I can... Can you imagine... A yes or a no? Can you imagine it happening? I can't imagine. That's why I said I'll leave Islam because it can never happen. If you can imagine... If I said I can't imagine the children, the, the children who recite the Quran doing it, how would you respond to me? I'll prove to you. Come sit down with me in an institution. Where are you in UK? Yeah. Oh, there's so many institutions in UK where 10-year-olds narrate Quran in one sitting. Yeah, okay, but if if I said there are so many like kids who memorize this book, Doug's gonna get his kid, you know, because in the context of this conversation, right, all we have is testimony at this point, and it's clearly conceivable. I mean, I just think you're being dishonest if you say it's not conceivable. No, I swear to God, I'm not because you're asking us to conceive of because because it's not like you've shown us um these kids actually doing it right. You're asking no, I... us to conceive of these kids doing it, and we're listen, like, listen, yeah, that's I... I mean that's conceivable, right? It's a coherent concept. I can understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. um. And then in the one case, right, based on testimony, you're saying, no, you can't even imagine that happening and you don't, or you don't understand what will happen. Or, uh, and then in the other case, you're expecting us to accept on the basis of testimony that it can happen. I think that that is, that, that's inconsistent, right? So, so my claim is that because, uh, you know, again, going back to my original claim of Quran being a miracle. So uh, why, you know, again, like uh, physically or in this world with our current understanding, with the current memories of the kids and adults i mean let alone kids like um i doubt i don't know about an adult who could memorize uh, mohammed let me ask you this let's say you're right that it is a miracle for kids to memorize the whole quran let's say that's the best explanation what would be the second best explanation no no I'm, listen i'm not claiming that's the best best explanation i've not no look, okay. term, which is the best but there's other explanations so, no forget about that focus on my question here yeah. What would be the second best explanation for a 10-year-old kid reciting the Quran that has nothing to do with the miracle of the Quran? Uh, there is no explanation. There won't be any need because this is... Can you imagine... Uh, so let's say Allah is real and he comes down and says to you, Muhammad, um, um, you're actually wrong on this one. <laughs> it's not me who's doing this, uh, responsible for this miracle. And you say, well, then how do these kids do it? And then Allah says, what do you, what do you think would be a second best explanation? There is no explanation. Because I'm claiming my, my, my claim is that it's a miracle 
uh, because Islam is true and Quran is true, and this is one of the small things. Here's a, here's a second best explanation. Hard work. Yeah, people could try as much as possible, but they won't be able to do this. Or the but what kids. if they did? That's the thing. I'm I'm saying it won't happen. I can claim when well, you, it won't happen, the, right? The kids... Because you won't perform a study, right? You're not going to take kids in a controlled setting and provide them with text that's equal to the Quran in size and the exact but, but same that, conditions that claim, to see whether or not claim, they memorize but, it. They claim that. Uh, a, a book longer than Quran and a kid can narrate it in one, one section. But, but this is just an empirical claim, isn't it, right? So actually what a responsible thinker should do is they should wait until they have a controlled test where they can see if this happens for texts other than the Quran in the exact same So this, this is not a new claim, by the way. This has been there for a long time. And if it was possible, uh, um, there, uh, you know, there, so there what are the studies then where there has been there have been controlled tests performed? Uh, uh, for uh, books other than Quran? Yeah, of the of the same length of the Quran, where the children are taught them in um, using similar methods in the same amount of time, and they are unable to memorize those books because magic isn't involved. But in the case of the Quran, they're able to memorize them because magic is involved. What it's are not those? Magic. Well. Divinity. If we do it magic, okay. <laughs> yeah, for for you it's a, a magic, but for us it's a miracle from Allah because it's because that's what that's what we claim. But I can, I can challenge you. But, I'm challenging you. Take right. So which so which are those studies, right? What which have been performed to compare and find that the find that the actual there is a different ingredient between the Quranic case and the other textual case, and so, the only possible thing that could be. Is going to be something divine, right? Because we've controlled. I, I'm, for I'm basing I'm basing my opinion on because of my faith, and here's my claim, and it's a miracle. This is what now it's up to people who do not believe that it's a miracle to deny me by. Well, no, it's not because I've told you why you don't have good enough justification for believing um, your claim, right? I've told you that that actually it's irresponsible to believe the conclusion of your argument in light of the fact that we don't have evidence to compare it to that that's the, but but again here i am i'm i'm basing my opinion based on my belief so right there but, is no so, but then it's not a very good argument is it if you have to believe the conclusion in order to reach the conclusion of the argument so, but, but so then, that you're only going to believe the premises we're not right? talking if, about science here we're talking about miracles we're not talking yeah we're about talking about yeah but we're, we're engaging in like a form of disagreement where you've presented us with a type of argument right and the argument is something like there's no way of explaining this thing other than that divinity is involved, namely mm -hmm. Islamic divinity, right? Yeah. But you've said that the only person who's going to accept these premises is someone who already believes in Islamic divinity. No, so no. It's no, not no. a very good. Well, that's no, what no, you've no. just said, yeah, though. You yeah, said, yeah, yeah. No, I believe no, I, these I premises because I, of my faith. I get your point. OK, uh, well, uh, uh, let me rephrase what I was trying to say. I believe in this and I you know there is no there's no way another kid who is 10 years old who will be able to narrate another book other than quran in one so that's sentence. your hypothesis right but no well you, you said i that? know how do you know that yeah uh that's again yeah i was going to complete what i was going to say that that's based on my belief do and you know you know that, that no one else can recite a, uh something longer because of your belief yeah um, and because of my can belief, people have and, beliefs that are false of course there's people How do you know your belief that no one can recite something longer than Quran is not a false belief? Maybe it's just a false belief you have. Well, that's again going back to my belief on Quran itself. Because Why do you believe the Quran, Quran is true? <laughs> I told you the miracles of the Quran. So that's one miracle. You believe the Quran's true because of the miracle of the Quran. And how do you know and that... Islam, the, and you Islam said, is true because of Quran. And, you know, all the different miracles of Quran. So that's one of them, which I told you. And then there's others. So Okay, what's another I, miracle? Okay, so Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in Mecca all his life. He did not leave the Arabian Peninsula. And there is a, you know, I'm sure you would have heard of it, but... Uh, Embryology? A verse in the Quran, a verse in the Quran, which talks about having a barrier, an unseen barrier between... The two waters, sweet and salty water. Okay. And so the claim is, how could someone who has lived all his life in Arabian Peninsula never seen a sea, an ocean, 
claim this, make this claim and have this in the Quran. So that's something because, uh, 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 you know, something because God told him that. Okay, so what would be the second, so one explanation is God told him that. What would be the second best explanation? So, uh, you know, the people who don't believe in God or they don't want to believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Christians, they would say, oh, the water is different density, so they're not mixing. And uh, there's barrier all the way, and there's different colors on this. Come on, I can. I mean, there's different explanations. No, 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 no. There's a, there's very simple explanations that someone told Muhammad this. Uh, you're looking up. To, you're looking up and to the left. Is there spiders on your ceiling? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he articulated what his point is. Well, I don't think it's that he knew it. He got it correct. That it was salt water. I think it's that it was a scientific process that couldn't have been known about at the time or something i think that's what he's trying to say so and so, so it's like it actually so no doesn't matter it actually doesn't matter what yeah, the claim it's, is it's just one explanation is god told him another explanation is another person who knew told him so uh but but the thing is that nobody of his companions are historically prone to go on that uh, in ocean how do you know and that this, so so you know you know uh, uh, you know all the verses in the quran they have timings when they were really revealed and so when he was surrounded by muslims there were very few who were believing in him and he narrated this worse when there was like barely a hundred of them who were believing and none of them were were travelers on seas or oceans is, is this what the, it says in the quran though right it says you know he so, god is the one who has mixed who has merged the two oceans and they don't mix and there is an unseen barrier which is in between the salt I, and but sweet water. I'm saying about in, in terms of his relations to um, other people, because the, pro the problem here is what we're doing, right, is we're engaging in trying to offer explanations for the text that we have, right? And so one explanation would be, for example, that someone else told him and then he lied about his re that person telling him, right? That Even if that's not the, a good explanation, that still is a, a possible explanation that's right but then you but then you can't rule that out by saying well it doesn't say that in the text right because no, the no, point no. is that that explanation is saying well it wouldn't say that in the text because he's lying about what happened and um no no so, no, you... no so it doesn't so so the thing is that the way islam works is quran is a book which uh which we're which we claim which we claim that it's revealed by allah to prophet muhammad and then prophet muhammad narrated it to his companions and they wrote it down whoever could write and then you know, uh, uh, you know, and one of his companions, he compiled it, compiled it into one, one set, and then that, that's where it comes from. How many years did that take? That's one explanation, but there's compete. We're saying that. Well, I mean, they might not believe exactly what I believe, right? But there are different um, explanations that someone who doesn't believe in Islam can posit about exactly how the how the Quran was compiled that don't involve God telling one guy or one guy dictating things to people, and that they might involve multiple people or different. You know different authors in an editorial process and things like that um i mean that's the point right is that then we compare these explanations and we see which of them is a better explanation well let's let's keep so, this very practical muhammad last night the creator of the universe god told me that the islam is false mm -hmm. do you but believe me i can't oh, no because you don't have uh, <laughs> good evidence for that I wrote. I just wrote it down on a piece of paper. I can send it to you if you want. But uh, were you like, uh, are you are an educated person, and uh, you, like, I, you, the thing is that uh, I don't know you. What's your background, and what's you know, how, how's your life, and all. That. If you want, I can so, uh, give you uh, references of people who say I'm a trustworthy person. <laughs> Do you know Doug or Muhammad better? The Prophet uh, Muhammad. Uh, of course, I know Prophet Muhammad better. Really? Yeah. In terms of, in terms of accepting, um, like things that the Prophet Muhammad says based on his character, you think you know you know him better than Doug? Oh yeah, for sure. I know him better. I've studied his life, and uh, and Doug, I just recently started watch when I saw his anti Christian. Okay, but, <laughs> but the explanation you gave of like I made the claim that God told me last night through an angel and, and you're the fact that you're an educated person and you're not illiterate and you know and of course i know that you're you're you don't believe in god so well the god of, of the I universe would... prefers education and knowledge over ignorance and stupidity so he would use a guy like me 
then then again you will claim oh he was an educated person so he could write the Quran by himself that's that's the counter no, no, no I'm just I'm just asking a question what's an explanation if I sent you what I wrote down here what's an explanation is it more likely that God actually did this and told me these very words that or that no, I'm I, I, or that I'm I making your, it up yeah no no I know your background that that'll just be a makeup thing okay so it is more likely that I'm making it up yeah, because the because of your background. Because of my background, and my background is that you don't believe in God, and uh, you're a nice person. I really like you, but you don't believe in God, and and uh, and then you know it's nothing. You know you, anybody could make that up, like you know people are claiming themselves. Okay, let's to be a let's imagine I'm Muslim, and last night God spoke to me as a Muslim that the Quran is actually false. No, because Quran says the last prophet was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and on him was the revelation, and the revelation was complete. There is no more revelation. Yeah, God told me last night that the Muslims say that they have the last revelation, but this is false. This is indeed the last revelation I give to you, Doug, here this day, that the Quran is false. Doug, not only you, a lot of other people have said that, but unfortunately, that's not right. But you don't because... believe me, do you? Yeah, because it, because clearly it's going against what's what's Quran. Quran. Of course, it's going against the Quran because the Quran's false. God told me. Okay, just one second. My kid just came in. Hold on. Got scared by. <laughs> it's the apologetics. It's my major kid crying. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I booted him. Boy, this is what we have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's progress to be made there eventually but it's like yeah. just say whatever right <laughs> there, there isn't really any serious attempt to 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 understand the explanations that he's putting forward or think about them at least from, from his point of view it's just whatever someone set, happened to say is the first thing well here's right? an, it, it, here's an interesting question like many times i asked him to imagine an, an explanation and he just says it's impossible or whatever yeah do you think he's saying that because He's incapable of imagining or just oh. stubborn? No, I think I think he's saying because I know. Uh, so so I think it was like a conjunction of, of a few claims, right? That together mean that that must be impossible. So one of them was that um, he, he claimed that the the people, the kids who memorize the Quran is a miracle. So it can't be done by like natural causal processes. And so it, he was like, well, because I've said that that's a miracle, right? It mustn't. It it just follows that it mustn't be possible for people through natural causal processes to do it. And so he's ju he's just like, even though it might see it, it seems like it would be possible. Um, it's actually not possible because I've said you know that it's a miracle in this other case. It, it, and, it's circular, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The thing um, is, uh, this thing we call communication and resonating with people. Like, how do you do this in this case? Because the outsider test for faith, it just falls flat, right? It, you saw it. It's just, well, no, yeah. it's just special pleading. It's mine is true because it's true because it says it's true. The Quran is true because it says it's true. And, it, and anybody else who duplicates it, it's false because the Quran says they're false. So what are you talking about? I mean, this is such unimaginative, elementary, low IQ type thinking. Like, what do you do? So I don't, I don't know exactly. My hope is that um, a lot of time and education would get him to shift his beliefs over time. So I, I was just quickly Googling, for example, about the um, manuscripts and the composition of the Quran and like his beliefs about, you know, there being no changes between later manuscripts and earlier manuscripts isn't even believed by Islamic scholars, right? They think that later manuscripts are different, yeah. but they just, the claim is just that the earliest manuscript is what Muhammad dictated. But there's still a question there, right, about like, how you can't you know get that into that's... those details otherwise you're just yeah. you're going to be muck in the muck and mire for hours like that's why i yeah. like to ask questions like are there people who exist who claim that there are different versions of the quran and he'll have to say yes and then and may, yeah may, and maybe this is the right way to get him to just think of in a way he's not thought before or something or think a thought that he just ha hasn't been allowed to let in or something. i don't know for all the Muslims listening right now, I will explain the Quran to you. And my explanation is far more reasonable and probable than yours. The Quran is not a miracle. The, 
the Quran was developed through the borrowing of texts from the Old Testament and the New Testament, a group of people who, who disagreed with concepts like the Trinity and Christianity, which I totally understand. I'm on your side on that. Trinity is kind of nuts. And they disagreed with even some things that the Jews were putting forth. But the, the Quran did not develop out of a vacuum. It was in this theme of Christianity and Judaism. Once you got that established, the whole thing about Muhammad and a cave and hearing from the angel Gabriel, mm. whether Muhammad had an experience or not, it's almost irrelevant. Muhammad yeah. was used as a front man for a group of people to compile the Quran over many years and say it was from God after the fact. Anything that you view as miraculous, like uh, it talks about embryology and some other things, the salt water and the fresh water, these are known things that were known by people at the time. Anybody who was educated uh, could have written stuff like that. There's nothing amazing or unique about the Quran that you couldn't... But it also gets a lot of those things wrong, right? Like yeah. Semen it, being produced in the abdomen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I'm even granting that it's right, which is wrong. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. there's nothing but amazing about it. the things it gets it. right, you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is how, how uh, the Quran was developed. By using a, bu a bunch of people over many, many years, uh, taking this, taking that, taking some new ideas, compiling it into a book, using a guy named Muhammad as the front man. And no God is needed for any of this to happen. It's very human. This is how, the, the, how Christianity was made. Christianity was made by looking at the Old Testament, reinterpreting some verses, coming up with some new ideas, and creating a new narrative based on the front man, Jesus. And Mormonism with Joseph Smith. And Mormonism developed the same way, using the Old Testament, New Testament, to create a new narrative, born, some borrowings, to, uh, using the front man. The history of mankind with, you believe there's many yeah. false religions, right? Sure. Given that well, fact. Yeah, yeah. Given that fact that there's so many false religions out there who claim revelation from a deity or deities, isn't it more likely that your revelation is like one of them, like just like one of those false religions? Could, could I jump in and, sure. and sure. add a point to that real quick? Well, if, it was, if, it, if we're just judging based on that alone, then yes. It, it could also be the case that it's it verifies our our worldview, right? If you look at all the the different religions in the world, yours included, right? Because a religion is just a a practice that you uh you use. You base your your worldview off of it, and then you put that into practice. Um, if it is true that Christianity exists, the one thing that all religions agree on that aren't Christianity and that includes agnosticism, atheism is that Jesus isn't God. Jesus said that's the only way to get to heaven. If you assume Satan exists, then what he wants is to take people to hell. And if you were to assume that he were to be able to do that, then you would see a proliferation of ideas that all agree on that central tenet. It, even Jehovah's Witnesses, even the Church of Latter-day Saints, who uses Jesus' name, well, well, what are you what, what are you not. saying, Nicholas? You're saying that Satan is the reason why there's false religions. Is that basically what you're saying? I'm saying one of two possibilities could be true. Either God doesn't exist, and that is why you you have all these different world differing worldviews, or God does exist, and there is some type of contest between him and the person he says that he's in war with. And if that's true, you would see a proliferation of religions and ideas that take you away from the one way God says to go into heaven. That would be evidence that he exists. So it's, it's either of those two possibilities. No. Couldn't, How so? Couldn't God exist? Well, King, maybe I'm not understanding you. God could exist and every single religion on the planet be false, correct? God could exist in every single... Yes, but I'm talking specifically about the God of Christianity. I know. God could exist and Christianity could be false. True or false? No, because Christianity 
is is a, is centralized under the idea that God exists. If God exists, Wait, let me ask the question exists, again. I'm going to make sure I, you, can a creator deity exist with the omni properties and yet Christianity be false? Yes, if it's not the God of Christianity. My my postulation is that there if we go. Christianity is true. Well, yeah, if Christianity is true, then true. yeah, but we're trying to figure out if Christianity is true. We don't start with that. Well, right? yeah. Yeah, but I'm not trying to argue that. I'm saying your presupposition is God doesn't exist. My presupposition is either God exists, but that the idea that there are many religions with differing viewpoints is not in contradiction to Christianity. And it doesn't mean... That well, yeah, I understand. The Christians will say it's because of sin entered the world, right? No, I, I mean, the fact that there are many different religions that agree and non-religions, like what you believe in, that agree on a central... Okay, so let's say there's a true religion, God. okay? Yes. God exists, and let's pretend there's a true religion. I, my question is still valid. Based on all the false religions we see, isn't it more likely Christianity is just like the others? No, and I'll tell you why. Okay, why? The, the importance of a decision is inversely related to the ramifications of it. So if you were to assume that God existed and the Christian God existed, the consequences of you being wrong are infinite because hell oh, is infinite. Oh, no, no, don't, infinite. don't, no, no, please don't bring up Pascal into this. <laughs> no. You're saying the, the, I, the, the severity of the consequences is what makes something more likely to be true? That's what I'm hearing no, you say. I'm saying that if you look at an equation and you have a variable that is infinite on one side, it doesn't matter how infinitesimally small the variable is on the other side because you're dealing with an infinite probability. Nicholas, you do side, realize you're going to hell in the, in the Muslim worldview, right? Well, yeah, but... It's, There's so much at stake for you. But that doesn't comport with my first point was that if you believe that... If you're a Christian and you believe that the one thing that can keep you out of heaven is that you don't believe in Jesus then in the Christian worldview, it, let, or let me ask you this. It, what would be an indication that there was one religion that was correct and all the others were false? Uh, if this God revealed himself. What if I told you a loving God can't reveal himself? Then he doesn't want to reveal himself, then that's fine. No, uh, what if I told you he cannot be loving if he reveals himself? Well, then he won't reveal himself if he's a loving God. Prove. Yeah, and that would prove that wouldn't be proof that he didn't exist then, right? And it wouldn't be proof that he did. Of course not. So if he what are we talking exists, about here? He be loving. If God exists, if and God he exists, that he exists, and he proves he exists, he cannot be loving. What? Okay, let me explain. What? If I present you with what? If I present you with, I know, I know. You're saying that if he proved to himself, he wouldn't be loving. If he proved himself to exist. What do you mean by proved? Exactly. If you knew he existed, he wouldn't be loving. Because? Because if love cannot be forced, right? It cannot be coerced. If you knew that God existed, you would have being rational. Nicholas, you would have Nicholas, to believe him, right? Satan. Does Satan know that God exists? Well, yes, because he was created by God. Were you created by but God? But he still chose to rebel. Christian or human beings weren't the same. Satan knows. It's been proven to Satan that God exists. True or false? Yeah. And yet he had the free will he to knows. choose to rebel. True or false? True, true. So you could exist, God could prove himself to you, and you could still have the free will to rebel. True or false? True. So what is what what are you talking about now? You're saying that God would not prove himself because if he did, I'm hearing you say then we wouldn't have the free will to reject him. But you just shown that Satan did. Well, that only assumes that you believe that the afterlife, if you believe that you can't sin in the afterlife, right? That only presumes that we stay in the same state when we're brought into the afterlife. 
what are you talking you about? The, We're talking if about in, if, if, if if Jesus, if God himself came into this live stream right now, are you saying I'm not free to reject him? Well, yeah, you are. But if you know that you're going to hell, would you still reject him? Maybe. Why? Would you be rational? Depends what hell is. If, if it's the ultimate if unpleasant hell... experience for extended over eternity, the the worst decision you could ever possible it is possible for him to make. Yeah, in that case, it would be harder. But if hell is just separation from God, and I don't, or annihilationism, which I don't want to live forever, then I would choose hell. But that's what separation from God is: is the worst possible experience. How do you because know that? All good, because everything good, everything that is good is of God. So that's why hell is so unbearable. Am I separated from God right now? No, because you're not in hell. Okay, so is that so? But I'm not a Christian. I reject the yeah. core propositions, but I'm still not separated from God. Well, he's he's with he doesn't live inside you, but God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's everywhere, even in hell. It does say in the <laughs> psalm that yes, in the lowest part of Sheol. So he's hell is there. not his the separation eye, well, of God then. He's there. It says his eyes are there. So no, his pre, his attributes are not there. So let me ask again, is God in hell or not? No, his eyes are there, but he isn't. Oh, his eyes are there, but he you isn't. You can see it. Does God have I, literal I don't, eyes? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't claim to be an expert. This is another plot hole in Christianity. You you claim that he's omnipresent except for hell, right? Well, he's, his attributes are withdrawn from it. So, you know, I mean, I can be in a room um but not actually i guess i don't know i don't know how to explain it i i, I can get back to you on that because i would want to explain that well and i do take your first question about whether or not satan rejected god because it's true if he had a free will he was able to reject him but see my question is whether or not you actually retain your free will when you go to heaven because if there's no sin then there has to not be any free will oh so you right? believe there's no free will in heaven i believe that you'd have to give up a part of your free will if you go to hell you're saying that you value your sin that's more like being kind of pregnant time. you're either pregnant or you're not do you have free will in heaven or not <laughs> you can give up if you were to for instance if you went to hell and let's say before you were converted to christianity you did a bunch of terrible things the word says that God removes your sin from you as far as the east is from the west. So if he's removing your sin, he's removing a part of you. It says that only things will pass that, uh, that will be saved by fire, the things that you, you Do you have. believe you can love God in heaven? You ha yeah, of course. Do you, you believe do you have the free will to hate God in heaven? I don't know. I don't think so, but I don't know. See, that's a problem for you. If Why? you don't have the free will to not love in heaven, then is love really love in heaven? Well, yes, because it's it, it is a it is an affirmation of the choice that you make on earth. If if you're if what you're saying on earth by loving God is saying I want you more than anything else, then like or for instance, I don't want to sin as a Christian. The greatest thing that I could have as a Christian is for me not to be able to sin, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And thus going to heaven losing a part of my free will wouldn't be a, anything bad it would actually be something very fantastic it would be an alleviation of that to be a moist robot no to be to lose that that thorn in my flesh as paul said mm. would you say that that god would be uh if you chose your sin over god would he be just in sending you to hell because you said that, as you said, a moist robot, that you'd rather have your sin than be a robot? Uh, you're asking me if it's just to have eternal conscious rather, torment? Would you? No, would it be just because, would the decision be yours in that case, and not him sending you there, but you sending yourself? Uh, no, the choice wouldn't be mine. Why not? Because God set up a system that's binary. Who's the gatekeeper to heaven? Who lets who's who's the final judge? Uh it says it was given to his son, so Jesus would right. be the final judge. So when Jesus says no to me, if Christianity is true, there's only one other option, right? Yes.
Yeah. You can either live with God or apart from it. So by Jesus shutting the gates and saying, no, he has sent me to hell. So if you're making the decision, let's say if I tell you, hey, if you want to come to my house, go down I-10, take a left on, you know, Maple Street, and then I'll be on the third house on the left. That's where I am. If you want to get to my house, that's where you need to go. Right. And then you say, I'm not going to go down I-10. I'm going to go down I-15, and then I'm going to take another left and a right, and then I'll see you at your house. Would you, would I be sending you away from my house because you didn't follow the directions oh, to my house that I gave you? But that's not the issue here. We're talking about a binary choice. So I could say to... It is. You can either get to my house or not. That's a binary choice. Okay, but the question is, what's the not? The not could be, in that analogy you just gave, the not could be a million other different places. Yes. But in Christianity, it's only one. Well, yeah, but that's why Jesus said broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go by it. There are many directions you can go to get oh to that. Oh, my goodness. We're talking about after right? death, right? Yeah. So is, there, single place, there's many is there many destinations after death or two? There are two. Okay. Are there many places that aren't my home? Even Christians will admit yes. this. I've talked to many Christians who, who gladly admit, yes, God sends you to hell. Jesus sends you to hell. But you're not one of them. No, I'm not Why saying not? that you don't go to hell because of the system that God set up. I'm saying the decision is yours. You really? either you choose one or the other. You believe that humans have the free will and uh, choice to d accept or reject? Of course. That's what free will is. Where's the grace in that? Grace is a gift given that is not deserved. It, it, I know, but... Can... The, what if you're if it's Christian is true and let's say you're a true Christian, what what's mm. the reason why you're going to heaven and I'm going to hell? Because God said so. I I don't have a better action answer than that. Well, yeah, you were implying a better action that it has something to do with human free will, but now you said God well, yeah, said but, so. Yeah, but He gave you one direction. You can only get there by one means. I know, he but why are you going to heaven right? and why am I going to hell? Because I trust in the Savior. And I didn't, right? Yes. So the power of your eternal salvation was in your hands, not God's, well, right? Yes, because you have free. Well, he consecrates the decision that you make. But the, it's uh, not, ultimately, the difference between you and me is a decision you made and a decision I made, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That puts yes. our eternal destinies in our hands, not God's. It's us. And again, I ask you, where's the grace in that? Are you, did you choose to be an atheist? Oh, you tell me. You're making it sound like I did. Well, no. I, no? I mean, if you don't, I'm at, you're implying that because you have the choice to do something, but God can I guess stop you is is that what you're getting at? No, I'm that you I'm, don't actually have the choice. I'm I asked you a very similar question. If you go to heaven and I go to hell, why? What's the cause of that? Is it God or is it humans? It's a, because of the choice you make. If I it's if humans. I choose if I choose to kill myself, it's not the gun's fault that I died. It's the fact that I Right. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing the, that. I'm pressing the cognitive dissonance on on one of the biggest plot holes in Christianity and that is the whole Calvinism versus non-Calvinism debate. Right. And by you saying the reason why you go to heaven I go to hell is because of the choices we've made. Then it's not the choices. Then basic the single choice. Or the single choice doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Then what you're saying is it is the power of humans which determines their eternal destiny, and this power is rooted in free will to accept or reject the gospel, yes? Well, yeah. Yeah. But I'm confused by your point. My point is then, saying that then, if God exists, then grace powerful? is diminished, at least, if not void, because a lot of Christians would say that you receive eternal life not because of anything you did, but because of what Jesus did. But you're just saying that that is false. It's what you did, you are going to have because of the choice you made, and I'm oh, going. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, I think I think maybe maybe I my misspoke or you misunderstood, but I probably misspoke. Yeah, of course, 
the only reason you can go to heaven is because of the sacrifice of Jesus. No, the sacrifice However, of Jesus is not uh, sufficient to go to heaven. No, it's your accepting. Of right, it's the human power. Well, why do you say it's power? Well, just to, it gives if more. It gives that, more effect. It, it it makes you feel worse inside because you don't want to be compared to God. So I purposely say the word power. But is free will not very powerful if it well, can determine your eternal destiny? Certainly. Yeah. But isn't there a corollary that if you can choose, if if you say, as you say, you have the power to go to heaven or not based on your choice, then wouldn't it follow that you send yourself to hell because you have that power? Well, uh, for, for now, I'll, I'll give it to you. Fine. But where is the grace in this scenario? Because it is you who chose to go to heaven and me who chose to go to hell, not God. Because you make the choice. I mean, I assume that you chose at a certain point to. What is grace? What God, is grace? Right? Grace is a gift given that isn't deserved. Okay, but, but you can't do you, force someone to accept a gift. Do I deserve hell? A gift, right? Do I deserve hell? I mean, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So yes, I yes, deserve hell. I deserve hell because of the do. choices I made. Yes. Well, because we're sinners, not because of the choices. Do you made. deserve heaven? Yes, because of the choices no, you don't. made. Of course, I don't. You don't deserve heaven. Isn't point God grace, just? The gift. Isn't God just? Yes. So but he's also merciful. So you do deserve heaven if you chose out of your free will to take up your cross and follow Jesus. No. It's what you did. I, God gives you a choice. Right. You see, maybe, maybe, using the, maybe using different language. When you say I deserve heaven, no one deserves heaven. That's what grace is. It's a gift. Sure, you, people deserve heaven. You don't deserve it. God gives you the gift of heaven. By affirming the choice you make in the choice who made Christ that you make, but that doesn't mean you deserve heaven. You deserve if death. you accept Grace Jesus is Christ good. as a true Christian, you take up your cross, follow him. Do you deserve hell? Yes, of course. If you accept That's Jesus as your personal savior, you deserve hell. Well, you deserve hell as a sinful human. The gift of God is eternal life. If you accept uh, the gift of God, do you deserve heaven? No. But I think you're just, we're talking past each other. You saying that you deserve it is different from saying that you get it. Grace is not receiving what you deserve, which is hell. That's the whole point. It's mercy. So you're equating grace and mercy? Yes. Would you disagree? Or, or did you, were, are you saying that you don't think that grace and mercy are the same? So you're saying that you will end up in heaven even though you don't deserve it, right? Yes. But you also say that um, I deserve hell, even though... I deserve hell too. We both do. We, you're saying we both deserve hell, but God doesn't give you what you deserve, but gives me what I deserve. Because you accept. Because of what gift. you did you and because of what I didn't. Yes. So ultimately, e the eternal destiny of every single human, or at least you and I, are placed in our hands. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we have the power to change it. I think that maybe what? that's where, the, maybe that's where, for, what I mean is, I think what you're trying to say is that the choice we have gives us the power to actualize it. Yes. And what I'm saying is, God gives us the choice to make, but the actualization is given by God. And he tells us, these are the consequences what? of the choice. You're saying we have the power to make the actualization. I'm saying the choice is given and we have the, we either accept it or not. There's only two options. Right. It's your choice. Your eternal destiny is based on what you've chosen. Right. So, so what? So what's what's your point then? Uh, maybe we're just talking past each other. Well, if you agree well, with that, then I tell you, if Christianity is true, you made an excellent choice. You should yes. be proud of yourself for choosing well, wisely. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Why aren't you proud of yourself for choosing wisely? Because 
I'll tell you something. Because if uh, you didn't choose that way, you'd go to hell. You made a great choice. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's despite my uh, my flaws that I choose that I chose the right. But where it counted, you did not have a flaw. You chose wisely and correctly to follow Jesus. Very well done. Well, so let me ask you this, Doug. See, the, you you see the problem I'm introducing here. I I don't. You don't. Uh, if if you don't agree, if you don't on believe the one that free will is a prerequisite for Christianity, then I, I suppose the Calvinists uh, listening know exactly what I'm getting at. I'm not a Calvinist. I know you're not a Calvinist. It's obvious, but the Calvinists know exactly where where I'm getting at. You have made yourself the god of your own life by freely choosing. Well, that's not true because I can choose to say that right. what he said. Is you can is choose. Sin. You can choose. You but, are the god what, of your own life by freely choosing to accept the gift that doesn't make me the god yes it, it, it does because you could have chosen not to and you are the sole uh determiner of your eternal salvation or damnation by what you freely choose to accept or reject you are the god you of your own life by premise, accepting right? christianity but you have to accept the premise right yes and you've accepted it no i'm saying i don't get to create the premise what you're saying when you say that you are the god of of your own destiny that's saying that you get to create the premise that oh i know i'm creating no. the choices no right no no nope. so where do the choices come from well i can grant you the choices came from god yeah that he created you with the ability to have free will but if you it's still up to you to, to choose or reject to accept yes, or reject but if i don't get to create the binary this is the, I'm not the god, to right? me this is like filthy rags it's like i'm <laughs> deserving of hell i'm a sinner but yet i made the correct choice freely i mean i did that it can't be god otherwise god's uh, like uh forcing us and we, we can't have god forcing people like the calvinists believe so i i just have to believe that it's all up to me to freely accept the gift or not but it's not really me because i mean i'm a sinner not deserving of of this heaven but yet i chose to choose correctly this is the tension you have to live with. Well, so what are you? Is the inverse true that you're sending yourself to hell? Uh, to me, this is now boring. Sure, fine. <laughs> can I? Can Why I do you use... believe Christianity is true to begin with? Let's switch topics here out of the okay, Calvinism. Okay. Why do you believe it's true to begin with? Well, um, when I was uh, about seven years old, I started to have uh, grand mal seizures. Oh, boy. and um, which, uh, you know, if, if you don't know anything about that, it's the worst you can have. And um, for a long time, I thought I was going to die. Um, and about the time that I was uh, 12 years old, my mom was uh, watching the 700 Club. And oh boy. she said that, yeah, I don't watch it much these days, but uh, they said uh, a little boy is going to be healed from electrical bursts in the brain. And now my the mom boy was you. Prayer. Well, yeah, and then a week later, um a woman in my grandmother's bible study had a vision and she said that she saw a little boy lying in a dark room and a voice said this boy will be healed and again the the voice said the boy's name's nicholas now i can approach something like that with an intense skepticism and choose to believe that it was just uh some type of placebo effect and uh that was the the reason for the alleviation of this illness which it hasn't recurred um or i can choose to believe in some supernatural element either one of those beliefs is going to take a great deal of faith but one of them is going to cause more cognitive dissonance in me than the other okay and but how did you determine that this one. supernatural intervention was um the god of christianity well um for a long time i was uh, running away from my religion uh mm. i never became an atheist um but i did spend an awful lot of time researching uh different world views i mean i i did a lot of uh research into evolution and you know and, uh christianity you know, why do you believe like christianity is true because the preponderance of the evidence strongly supports it okay for instance, what's the, the first uh, piece of evidence that comes to your head? 
probably the resurrection. Why do you believe the resurrection happened? The veracity of the of the Bible. The veracity. Of, the Bible is a big book. Why do you believe Christianity? Yeah. What what piece of evidence convinced you that the resurrection happened? Um, or one of well, them. Well, you know, uh, the lack of any good theory explaining the uh, the lack of a body, the um, uh, you know, you have things like swoon theory to try and explain, you know, mass hallucination, shared hallucination. Um, it doesn't really hold up to evidence. Um, many uh, apologists have actually given up trying to disprove the resurrection because it, the evidence is so resolutely on the side of it. Lack of a body like that, was one think. thing you mentioned. What would be so a good explanation would be that Jesus walked out of the tomb or flew or whatever. Well, what would, sure, but then what would why be, is it that nobody witnessed it? And what, what happened to the Roman guards that were guarding the body? And why did this Jewish Sanhedrin, who would have jumped at the the ability to say, that, what would be yeah, the second look, best? What would be the second best explanation for the tomb being empty? You tell me. If, I'm if asking you. Guarded. I don't know because I don't believe that. <laughs> you can, can you imagine a case? Like did really, well, I really, can really a start. Spaghetti water it doesn't mean I believe in it. Really, really start um, thinking about it. So let's uh, let's imagine that God's real, but Christianity is false. Okay. And we have this book that says uh, Jesus was placed in the tomb, and then the tomb was later found empty. And let's let's say you know that that's false. Try to then come I know up. It's false. Yeah, come come up with some theories of why the text says it's it happened, but it didn't. Well, or um, or did, uh, but that Jesus didn't rise. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, you could say, yeah. Well, maybe they uh, he just walked out of the tomb. You know, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. They, so uh, he wasn't really dead, and he just yeah. walked out. Okay, that's one explanation. What's that's another one? one? Explanation. What's another one? But I would ask, I would ask, what is the evidence for that? So I mean, we we could play. What's another explanation? Well, yeah, but. I, I reach my conclusions based on the evidence. Okay. I don't just come up with theories. But right? we know that Jesus did not rise from the dead in this hypothetical How thought you know? experiment. Oh, in this experiment. Yeah, yeah. So one explanation is that the tomb was empty because Jesus never died and he just walked out. Okay. What's another explanation? Uh, some people overpowered the guards and stole the body. And maybe he was dead. Okay. That's another explanation. What's a yes. third explanation? Are these, is, is the third to me the last? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, we can do it together. I'll help you. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What if the tomb that they went to, they thought Jesus was there, but it was the wrong tomb? Well, that'd be a hard thing to do. Okay, I mean, but it's, that's, it's possible, but it's, possible. it's not okay. likely. So we have, uh, we have that Jesus never died, and he just walked out and never rise. And we have that um, the, the body was stolen. Uh, we have a wrong tomb. Uh, here's another explanation. Uh, maybe he was never put okay. in a tomb in the first place. Very likely. Okay. But would you just say very in likely? This, in this example, it's very likely. Not yes. put in a tomb in the first place. But uh, we have to look. So let me. What is the objective here? If we're not actually talking about historical. The objective here is to think facts. critically. Okay. So we're thinking but critically. Leads to so now, now, right? now we came up with four, four alternatives to Jesus actually rising from the dead. Number one, Jesus never died, and uh -huh. he like kind of woke up and walked out. Number two, that uh, he did die; the body was taken out and put somewhere else. Number three, that he did die; he was put in a tomb, but the tomb that everybody went to look for him was the wrong one, and nobody knows where the right tomb was mm -hmm. and number four is that he was never put in a tomb in the first place maybe he was just thrown yes. in a pit okay now out of all those explanations throughout history do we have throughout history uh people thinking that someone's dead and they're not dead answer yes number two yeah. do we have throughout history that bodies well, have been stolen the answer is yes it, but number three do, do we, we have anybody there what's that we should pay attention to the the, the evidence for or to the. Oh, hang on! But we're thinking critically here. We're not taking but the it's Bible. But not critically if we're not thinking with if we're not using evidence. It's just hypoth It's just hypotheticals. Okay, but we might as well be talking about a flying spaghetti monster, right? Part of the part of the 
a critical thinking stage is being open to the idea that just because the Bible says something doesn't make it true, or right? So, but for example, for for example, um, you said that okay, if Jesus died and didn't really die and just walked out, the, the guards at the tomb would have seen it, right? I yes. think you said that. Well, you're yes. you're assuming that there were guards at the tomb in the first place. And where do you get this assumption from? Well, the text says it. Well, you're assuming the text is accurate, correct? Do you have any reason to doubt it? Because it's not just the text. Well, yeah, in this thought experiment, Bible, we know the truth. Historical evidence In this well. thought experiment, we know that Jesus did not rise from the dead. So now we're trying oh, to okay, explain okay. the text. I see, I see. Okay? So let's, let me finish what I okay. started here. All right. Throughout history, we, we know that of people who we thought were dead were not. We know that bodies have been stolen throughout history. We know that people misplace things, including bodies. And we know that, um, that people can write stories about a man being put in a tomb and not it happened. Not happened. We know people can make up stories. In other words, we know people can lie or be mistaken. Yes. So given all of history and what we know has happened, let me ask you this. What is more likely to you that Jesus actually died and rose from the dead or one of these four alternate explanations? It depends on two things, your view of the evidence surrounding the events and your view of what is supernatural. So that depends on your view of natural and what is your view on the supernatural. How many people do you know have risen from the dead besides Jesus? None, but that's that that should be the case if he's God, right? If other people have done it, it's not unlikely. It's not proof of his deity. But we do have you have heard of people being claimed to be dead and not being dead. You have heard of people not by steal things. You have heard people misplacing things and you have heard of people making up stories, right? But you've never heard of a resurrection other than Jesus. So given yeah. your experience in the real world, every explanation is more plausible in your experience than an actual resurrection, true or false? Well, no. What is your view on near-death experiences? <sighs> Can we stay or on Jesus? A... <laughs> yes, but if you don't look at, I told you that my beliefs come from the preponderance of the evidence. If you're not willing to look at the preponderance of the evidence and instead try to silo okay, out. We were just looking at one of piece it. of evidence and that was the empty tomb. And now are, are, you, are we now finished with that? Well, but you're not looking at it in context. It's, it, 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 you can't look at a dead body on the floor and say, well, let's look at the sleeve. And we're only going to look at the sleeve. We're not going to look at the, the murder scene. We're not going to look at the motives of the people involved. We're only looking at the sleeve. It's, it's, Is there anything in the New Testament that you think didn't happen in history? Not that I know of, but I could be proven wrong. Like, do you believe that it went dark for three hours over the whole land when Jesus died? Sure, why not? Do you believe that the... Is that, has it never happened before? It's never happened before, no. Solar eclipses? Three hours? Do you know how long an eclipse lasts in one well, sure. geographical re region? It's six if minutes. The, uh, do you don't think that there's any natural explanation for that happening? It's impossible? Oh, well, anything's possible in the magical kingdom, but I'm, no, I'm saying I'm asking you, do you believe it was out? dark for three hours when Jesus died? Well, could it be possible as cloud cover? Oh, you think Intense dark just cover? means that there was a low pressure cell and it was okay. Do you believe the temple? Do, do you believe the temple actually cut in two when Jesus died? Well, the uh, yes, the earthquakes not happen. Do you believe that the dead came out of the graves and walked around Jerusalem when Jesus died? Depends on what you define as dead. If it were, if it was talking figuratively, then sure it could happen. Actual dead, actually dead people coming out of actual graves and actually walking. Do you believe that happened when Jesus died? I don't know. You don't know? No. You don't, don't know what you believe there? No. I'd have to. I'd have to think about it. 
It's interesting a that with the time, it, a lot of the times there's things that are. It's interesting are with the dark with the darkness for three hours you went to cloud cover and with the temple curtain you went to earthquakes and when I went to the dead people walking you said I don't know there was nothing else because to go I have to no there. Natural analog, right? Yeah. I told you I became I, I I reached this position based on the preponderance of the evidence. You're asking me individual things and I'm telling you this one has a natural explanation. This has a natural explanation. Therefore, it it's not. It's going to discount my belief. You're going to believe that this one, no matter what, know. right? Like there's hmm? there's nothing that will ever change your mind on this, right? Not that I can see, but I, I'm like I'm, you're you're in deep with Christianity. There's nothing that can shake your foundation. Am, am I right? Like even if I showed you the bones of Jesus, you would say that's not really Jesus's bones. It would be difficult for me to accept. Um, because, like I said, the preponderance of the evidence is weighted on the other side. And knowing that the the Knowing that Jesus that saved accept, your life when you were a kid. No. And it has nothing no, to do like with I that? No, like I said, I walked away for a long time. I believe I was a false convert. I didn't find uh, my faith again until I was, you know, now, like 33. See, I bet you, I, I, it's getting late. I've been on for four hours, but... I have something called oh, the flying. I, I've I have a thought experiment called the flying man thought experiment, and I really think when you say preponderance of the evidence, I can layer any piece of evidence you want, and well, we can try it. My great 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 okay. great grandfather could fly unaided. He could just fly, and he flew across the Grand Canyon hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago, in um, Grand Canyon. He just north rim. Flew to the south rim. That's the claim I'm making. You know nothing else at this point. Do you believe it? No. No. Okay. And this Are you is, willing to die for it? Hang on. Now, there's um, a document. It's kind of called a creed. It's in a letter. And okay. in this letter, it says that he flew in front of 500. He flew in front of 12. And finally, he flew to the author of the letter. Do you believe it now? Like I said, are you, are you willing to die for that belief? Do you believe it now, based no. on the claim and that evidence? Okay. No. Now let's add on, there's four diaries written uh, years after my ancestor flew. Four different diaries written by four of the people associated with the event that claimed that my ancestor claimed to be God. He claimed to do miracles, or they, they say he did miracles, and that he flew. And it gives more detail of, he, of who he, he uh, flew in front of women first. And do you believe it now? Again, no. But No, you don't believe it. My question is, were any of those people willing to die for the police? Okay, so this is a sticking point for you. It's that, the willingness to die. Okay, so now let me tell you this. Well, no, no, not, not just that. It, it's the fact that people who didn't believe in the flying man, who later changed to the opposite side and were willing to die for that belief, it's that conversion from being okay. like okay, James hang on, Nicholas. Jesus, who we're, we're getting there. The you don't believe my ancestor flew based on the creed, about the letters. You don't believe based on the diaries, the claim to be God, the claim to do miracles. You don't believe it. But wouldn't you know that there are traditions written 50 to 100, 150 years after my ancestor flew that his followers were persecuted for their belief in, in my ancestor that he flew and that they were willing to die for this belief now we don't have any evidence that they could have recanted and still lived however but we have evidence that there was rampant persecution over the flying man followers they it says in text that they were willing to go to their death believing that my ancestor flew question do you believe my ancestor literally flew now did any of those people who didn't believe he could fly see him fly and then change the yes, position? Yes, his own brother 
and and the friend who wrote the creed, they persecuted the people who believed in the flying man, and they later converted. There's uh, one guy's name's James, who was uh, the brother of the flying man, and another guy's name's Paul, who wrote that creed. Jeremetrius, the, the flying man, Jeremetrius. So people <laughs> who didn't believe in the flying man converted to the flying man. People who persecuted the flying man followers change. Do you literally believe that my ancestor, hundreds of years ago, flew unaided, given the preponderance of all this evidence? Mm. And... Is this also including? Do you believe based testimony? on all that evidence? Yes or no? Does it also include my personal testimony? I told you that's another lynch. Based on what we've that. talked about so far, do you believe my ancestor flew? Yes or no? No, because no, like I said, it didn't involve my personal testimony. No. I okay. Now for the 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 icing on the cake. Okay. My nephew, he had MS. <laughs> he was about to die. And then our neighbor lady had this vision of the. Well, flying. no, you have to be talking about me, right? He had this vision. I no. I had MS and was about to die. No, my nephew oh, okay. had MS. He was about to die, and a neighbor lady had a vision of the flying man. The flying man told her in the dream that that my nephew would be cured of MS, and you know what? He doesn't have MS, at least no symptoms. Mm. And he gave his life to the flying man after that when he heard that. And the neighbor lady actually even knew that my nephew's name, his name was Nicholas. Based on the preponderance of all the evidence that I've submitted to you to today, do you believe my ancestor literally flew unaided across the Grand Canyon? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. No. You should give up Christianity then, because that's <laughs> the evidence you have. I think the, the problem is, if you live in a natural world where, uh, as you said, I mean, obviously we've never seen anybody fly. Um, you seriously we, go in there? No. If we live in a world where there is evidence of some type of afterlife, there is evidence of that, a lot of evidence. You know, I can show you many books by, you know, very respected doctors like uh, Pin Van Lamo who wrote, in the Lancet, um, peer-reviewed articles about uh, NDEs. If we understand that that is scientifically uh, approachable and uh, verifiable, then there is evidence of flying. There's evidence that some people can fly, even though it hasn't been verified. If we have millions of people across the UK, the US, and Canada who have said that they've flown, of course, nobody's seen it. That circumstantial evidence, those uh, testimonies of people, there is there are millions of people who are hallucinating and are experiencing things after they have no EEG, no EKG. They're medically dead. Either those people are all lying or there's some validity to their claims. And some people fly. They know the flying man. That's the difference between those two things which is what I mean when I say the preponderance of the evidence. I don't arrive at this simply through faith. There is evidence, claims, that, uh, that lead me to this conclusion. Okay, I'll give you the last word. Thanks for coming on. All right, brother. God bless you, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, did you want me to say something, man? <laughs> no, I want you to leave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll help you. Did you guys just witness what I witnessed? Did you guys see what just happened? My dog can't believe it. I went through every piece of Christianity evidence, the big pieces at least, including his own personal experience, and he doesn't believe it. What, what, what do you do at this point? Nicholas, self-reflection. You need some self-reflection here.
that was actually one of the better flying man thought experiments I've ever gone through with a person where they basically say, no, 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 don't believe, don't believe, don't believe. Added on everything that they use to say they believe in Jesus. And it doesn't make a dent. Can someone explain that to me? Oh, I'm not surprised, but... And I said I would only go two hours roughly today, and look what happened. And no, I'm not taking any more callers. I've had enough of you. Go away. Made by Jimbo says, because he knows you're making it up. Come on, dog, Doug. How can the listener remove the knowledge you're doing a thought experiment? Well, that, that's a tough thing, isn't it? They know I'm making it up, so they can't believe it. Hmm. Yeah. I guess some people are just not capable of seeing the purpose of thought experiments to apply it to their own life and not asking themselves the question, maybe what I believe is made up. Hmm. By the way, the that video I made, I want to play that. This one here. Um, Stop the music, Myron. No, I mean it. Stop it. Thanks. This here. This question separates the smart apologist from the not so smart. Um, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, could we have the New Testament exactly the way we have it today? If no, why not? No, because that Paul was basing everything on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. The gospel authors were building up to this climactic moment. We wouldn't even have the New Testament. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. This, when I hear this, I'm just going to, when I hear this, I think, IP, what is wrong with you? Like, there is literally something blockading your neurons in your brain. For those, he spoke quickly, but for those of you who couldn't hear it, my question was, could we have the New Testament exactly the way we have it today, and yet Jesus not rise from the dead? Could we? And if you hear an apologist say this, Jesus didn't rise from the dead, could we have the New Testament exactly the way we have it today? If no, why not? No, because that Paul was basing everything on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. The gospel authors were building up to this climactic moment. We wouldn't even have the New Testament. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. If you cannot see how utterly stupid, 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 stupid that answer is, I can't help you. Now, this is what a smart apologist said. And by the way, Braxton actually gave an answer similar to this. You say, well, yeah, it is possible we could have the New Testament exactly the way we have it today, even though Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, but I believe it's highly unlikely. Sure, the people who wrote the New Testament lied or were severely mistaken, although I can't imagine how they can be mistaken about eating fish with Jesus. But I can imagine that people just lied uh, or heard stories or they weren't the ones there to actually witness it. And this story was legendary and built up and blah, 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 blah. That is how a smart Christian answers that question. This is how a defensive, at least momentarily stupid person answers the question. Exactly the way we have it today. If no, why not? No, because that Paul was basing everything on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. The gospel authors were building up to this climactic moment. We wouldn't even have the New Testament. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. I mean, um, I think you could have it. <laughs> he goes on to say, but it would be different. But uh, to me, that was just funny. Well, we could have it. Like, just... 
IP, if you ever hear this, just stop and think for a second and just change the question slightly. Could we have the Quran exactly the, the way we have it today if Muhammad never heard from the angel Gabriel from God? Then it's easy to say, yeah, of course, we could have the Quran exactly the way we have it today if the core proposition is not true. Could we have the Book of Mormon exactly as we see it today if Jesus didn't appear, appear to Joseph Smith? Yeah, of course we could have the blah, blah, blah. It's so easy, right? When you just shift it to a different religion that you deem false. But no, 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 no. I can't even imagine, I can't even conceive of the New Testament existing if Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead. If that is you as a Christian, I judge you as stupid, unimaginary, deep muck and mired up to your neck into this indoctrination or experience or whatever. You're just stuck in mud if you can't even imagine the case where the New Testament could exist and Jesus not rise from the dead. And this is what I did with Nicholas here with come up with four exp naturalistic explanations for the resurrection that doesn't involve a resurrection. Myron, what's wrong with people? Yeah, I know they need the hope, meaning, purpose, but still, like, they got to be able to think, right? Yeah, I, I know. It, it triggers a fight or flee, flee or fight. Yeah, emotional response. Yeah. Was there any hope for IP? Get him drunk first. Well, you might be on to something. Myron thinks we should get IP drunk, and then he can maybe start imagining things better. <laughs>